you, Brother Lord bless you. Good morning, friends. It's happy to be here again this morning and kind of a little unexpected, I guess, to myself and I'm sure it would be to the congregation. And uh, I just was reading and thank you, sister. And the Lord just seemed to put a little something on my heart to bring to the church and I thought it's time to do it. And now, uh, this, when I arrived, uh, and then not knowing we'd be here this Sunday, I've announced that I have a, a message for the church. And um, I want to, if God willing, bring this message next Sunday. And there will be a, quite a lengthy time. So it probably will not get out before 12.30, 1 o'clock. Uh, maybe if at that time. It's, uh, it's um, been on my heart for a long time and I think I owe the public an answer why that I haven't been active out in the field. And I've preached all around it, but I'm sure it, it has not never just come right out to where it should be. So I think the Lord willing, next Sunday, I just want to take my time and just lay out a reason and why and let you know scripturally what's going on, see, <clears throat> just why it's all about, because I'll probably be going overseas or somewhere right away. I'm waiting now to see which way he will call me to go. Last, about three nights ago or two nights, I had a phone call near midnight and it was to pray for some woman that was in the hospital and uh, they called me and said, pray. And I forget the name that they gave me that said it was a friend to Mrs. James Bell, our sister here at the church, a colored sister, a very loyal, fine woman. I believe the name of Shepherd was given. Me. So I got out of the bed and knelt down and, and told my wife, the phone ringing woke her up, and I said, we must pray for Mrs. Uh, Shepherd a sister that's called, it's a friend to Mrs. James Bell. So we prayed for her, got back in the bed, and then uh, long about 10 or 11 o'clock the next day, uh, I got a call again, it's Billy, and he said it wasn't Miss Shepherd, said it was Miss Bell herself, not Miss Bell's friend, it was Mrs. Bell, and she's in the hospital very seriously. And... Uh, Rushing out the hospital, but she was gone. The Lord had called Mrs. Bell home. Mrs. Bell has been a faithful uh, gatherer with us here at the church for years. Her husband, James, and I worked together with my father many years ago. Out running, We run these spurs in from the Pennsylvania uh, into the Colgate here. Many years ago, I guess 30 years ago or more. And we love Sister Bell. She was a grand person. And I understand she had a acute attack of gallbladder condition. And um, they, her physician that knew the case real well was uh, out of town at the time. And a new physician came to look at her and it advised emergency operation, and she never survived it. And, uh, and she was, I think her, way I understand it, that her regular physician wouldn't have prescribed the, the operation because she was heavy set, and uh, her gallbladder was bad, and she'd have uh, stones, I think, or something in it. And, uh, and the Lord had been merciful. She'd had those attacks before, and the Lord had taken care of those many times. But it just happened to be that well, if we bring it to a full measure, we'd say this, God had called for Sister amen. Bell, and that's the way it had to be taken, you see. Yes. Amen. And how that he missed, brought it around to me that I thought it was Mrs. Sh uh, Miss Shepherd. I didn't know Miss Shepherd. The lady may be here this morning, and I may know her for a look at her face. But it was said it was a Mrs. Shepherd, and whether it was all done like that, so that if, it, if I know it had been... Um, 
Mrs. Bell had been in that shape, I'd probably went out there and been interceding for her right away. And then, you see, that God didn't want us to do that, perhaps. So yeah. we know that all these things work together for good to them that love God. And I'm sure that Sister Bell loved our Lord. Amen. She was a good woman. Now, she's one of us. In here, we don't have any lines of color. The family of God doesn't draw lines of color. Whether we're red, brown, black, or yellow, it doesn't matter. White, whatever it is, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. And so we, we love her. And we'll miss her. The tabernacle. How will I miss Sister Bell's that great big coarse amen back there in the corner? And taking her up home, she'd talk about the Lord Jesus. And if I understand it right, never knew it till just a few moments ago, but I think her funeral is to be held right here in the church. That's right. This coming Tuesday at the one o'clock. One o'clock, and I think you and I are to officiate That's in this right. funeral service. But just in a congregation that were one weaker this morning, in respect yes. of our sister Bell, let's just stand to our feet just a moment. <clears throat> As we bow our heads. God of life. Who gives and takes life. As Job of old said. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Some years ago you sent Sister Bell among us. To be a fellow citizen with us of the great commonwealth of God, and we thank you for ever inspiration that she was before us. How that she loved to sing Amen. and to testify and would be so filled with the Spirit till she could scream out and shout and she wasn't ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For to her it was the power of God and the salvation. Amen. Seeing her years number up. And the time comes when we must all answer. And thou hast taken her from us this morning to be in thy presence. For it's truly that when we leave here, we are in the presence of God. Oh God, we thank you for all. We pray that you will bless her husband, my friend, James her son, her daughters, all those. He understand that her boy is flying from Germany out of the armed forces to come home to pay the last respects he can on earth to his departed mother. How that young man's heart must be throbbing this morning. I pray for him, Lord. God bless him. Bless Jimmy and how he's seen him work out there in tiring hours to make a living for his family. Uh, I pray that the great family will not be separated, but the family will, will be unbroken in that land on the other side. May we, Lord, now tighten up the armor and the girder a little tighter. Go out into the battle now to fight one less than we had a week ago. We pray that you'll sustain us and strengthen us and help us as we carry on. And someday may we all gather together again at the other Amen. side. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Now may the soul of our departed sister rest in peace. I would like to say that her her funeral is to be preached here Sunday or Tuesday, and we would anybody is welcome to come. It will come. I guess Brother Neville here has the arrangements, and uh, you have them. <clears throat> now today, I just See, there's not too many. If there could be a seat somewhere brought for Brother and Sister Slaughter back there. I got your call, Sister Slaughter, and went to pray for your uh, the other Sister Slaughter, Sister Jean Slaughter, with that rabbit fever, tularemia. She sure has a bad case of it, but we're trusting God 
but she'll be all right. Now, we uh, want to read some Scripture, and I just want to teach this morning, taking my time, because since I've come back from out Arizona, why my throat's just a little raw. And um, now next Sunday, don't forget, and I think Billy's already mailed out the, the advertisements, and um, it'll be uh, quite a lengthy service, we believe. So come early and as you can. We want to start right about 9.30 or, I mean, 10 o'clock. And maybe remember about 1 or 1, maybe 12.30, 1 o'clock, something like that, three or four hours or more. I like to take and just take the Scriptures, bring your pencil and paper, and just lay it out. If there's any question, you ask, ask it, you see, and maybe we can explain it, do what we can to help. Now, let's read some Scriptures first. Now, I have three places in the Bible that I would like to read. And first one of them, if you'd like to mark it down, and if you've got a pencil, I want to refer this morning to several uh, uh, texts that I would, uh, or several scriptures rather, that I would like to refer to. The first will be 1 Peter 5, 8, 10, Ephesians 6, 10, 17, and Daniel 12, 1, 14. Now, in reading, taking our time, and everybody practically seated, so, a few standing yet in the back and on the side. But we are going to try to get through as quick as possible and let you out. Then we're going to pray for the sick. we got a little lady laying here this morning. It's very sick. I understand that she was very sick yesterday. And I, I just wanted her to hear this morning first before I prayed for her. And I know the conditions of the little lady. And she's very sick. But we got a very great Heavenly Father Amen. who has more than conquered all sickness. And I got a, a little... I asked Mrs. Woods if she would read it, but she she's a little reluctant of, of doing so. An article where a medical doctor was certainly surprised when he was a critic on divine healing and wouldn't even let anybody talk about it in his office. And his nurse also. So it happened to be he got a patient that was a cancer case. The big cancer, he wanted nothing to do with that, so he sent her over to another clinic. They wanted nothing to do with it over there, so they sent her back. So they... Oh, it is on the breast and it was in a terrible condition and all this uh, skin had been eaten off and the cancer went out into the breast, into the ribs. I guess you understand what I mean. I got our little doctor friend from Norway sitting with us this morning and he got all of his material ready. For, he said, you know what, it, it, she wanted him to operate and remove the breast and it was a very bloody job and, and he got all of his packs and everything. The nurse got the lady ready and brought her into the operating room and then she went back to get the instruments to that would have to be used by the doctor and his assistant to take the breast off and so they had the towels and things laying over and so they started when he started to turn around her husband won't know if he could sit in the end of the room and pray he was a holiness preacher and he sat there by the side of the foot of the bed and praying of course, the doctor wasn't too well satisfied with that, you know, him being in there. But as long as he wouldn't look, it wouldn't hurt him. Well, I guess it was all right. Wouldn't faint, wouldn't faint. So while it's setting praying, they come a fluttering in the room. And the doctor turns to go to with his instrument to start to remove the breast. He moved pack after pack. There wasn't even a scar on the breast. Amen. Not even a scar. He said, does it, does it move? And he started. And the nurse gave her testimony. Both of them went out and has become Pentecostal. Filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> serving the Lord. Not even a scar. The doctor Holbrook testified himself. said, one minute before there, there was a the woman laying there and the nurse and the great big cancer all pushed out on her breast 
And one minute later, there wasn't even a scar where it had been moved. That's one of our fine medical doctors here in America. He said he was convinced right then. And yet he was a deacon in a church. See? See, the people just think church is something you just go to and it's, uh, oh, you go there to learn to be good or something like that. That isn't it, friend. No, God is God. He's just as great today as He was, ever was. And He always will be the same. And He's a... We just love Him. Now, we want to read now from 1 Peter, the 5th chapter, the 8th and 10th verse to start with. Be sober, vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resists steadfastly in faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace who has called us unto His eternal glory by Jesus Christ, after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish strength, and settle you. How God be praised. Now in the book of Ephesians, We'd like to turn here to the book of Ephesians, the 6th chapter, and we'd like to read the 10th to the 17th verse I have marked out. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of the world, of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto yourself the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand in the evil day, having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all things, the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Amen. Now, over in the book of Daniel, I would like to read some more. Now, Daniel, the twelfth chapter, and I want to begin at the first and read quite a, a lengthy part of this, 14 verses. And at that time... Michael, stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even unto that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, and some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contentment. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn away, turn away many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the, shut up the book, even to the time of the end, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. And I, Daniel, look, and behold, there stood other two, one on this side of the bank of the river, and one on the that side of the bank of the river. And one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, How long shall it be to the end of these words? wonders? 
And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that live forever, that it shall be for a time, time and a half. And when he has accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, these things shall be finished. I believe I'll stop right there. I want to take a text, if it would be called a text, out of there. From that, to draw this conclusion of the greatest battle ever fought. That's what I want to use for a text. Now, how I come to get a hold of this for a text for this morning, we have just come back couple of the trustees here at the church and myself was out in Arizona. And we went out really to have a meeting at Phoenix with Brother Sherritt at his tabernacle. But uh, when I found out that a, a brother was in town having services in a tent, well, then I felt a little reluctant about holding a meeting. I thought maybe I would have it on the Sunday afternoon so that no one would be bothered in their churches but find out that he had Sunday afternoon services also. And I was uh, a little bit worried about having a service. And so we brethren, instead of going uh, uh, on through the day as we were out hunting, we went into the city on and got ready and went to the Brother Allen's services. Brother A.A. A. Allen was having services. So we went to the services and Brother Allen preached a mighty sermon. We had a, a time, a good time, listening to Brother Allen, hearing the, the singers and so forth, how they sang and shouted and had a great service. And then we seen all along the road the hand of the Lord. Amen. Wherever we went, the Lord Jesus would meet with us. And there's something about being out to yourself, out in the deserts. There's something about it that if you're ever alone that way, there's something that draws you. That's, I guess, is one reason I like those out-of-way places. You get away from the power of the enemy. So much as we have here, a devil is almost harmless unless he can have something to work in. He's got, you remember those devils that were cast out of legion? They had to want to do more mischievousness, so they wanted to go in the hogs. So devils must have something to work in, somebody to work through. And that's the way God does too. He has to have us. He's depending on us to work through us. And many came while we were on the trip with dreams. And the Lord Jesus never failed but give the interpretation correctly and just be that, just exactly that way. And then He was good to us to lead us to the game and tell us where it was at. And, you know, just to be around like that. It's just wonderful. Set around a night by the campfire away from everybody for miles and miles and miles and watch the, uh, the flickering campfire around the rocky rims. And, oh, it was tremendous. One brother there who had been having trouble with a, his wife that had... Years ago, she raised her head in a meeting where that I was having service. And I'd asked them to keep their head down. I uh, had an evil spirit that wouldn't leave a, a woman on the platform. And the lady, uh, just uh, irreverent, raised her head anyhow. And the spirit left the woman on the platform and went to her. And this is around 14 years and the lady has been in serious condition. So much, even mentally, till she just 
does things that's not even right. For instance, left her own husband, went and married another man while she was living with her husband. Claimed she didn't know she'd done it. And uh, so the, um, they tried to examine her for this, what did she call that when you... Uh, amnesia? Ever what that name is, I guess that's right, doctor. Um, but it wasn't that. It was a spirit. And, her, and the lady was a fine friend of mine. But from that night on, she deliberately hated me. Of course, you can see why it was. But then when her husband came and we knelt in the room to pray, then the Holy Spirit came down. Hey. That was it. Then he appeared to her husband that night in a dream. He came back with a dream. He thought it was jokey. Come to find out it was the very answer to his wife's healing. How that the Holy Spirit did deal on down into Tucson with Brother Norman and Ammon. There the Lord began to work again with great powerful things and revealing things. One night, what drew me to this conclusion here, I was standing with Brother Wood and Brother Sothman and we were, it was about 10 o'clock at night and I was looking up towards the skies and a great awe came over me. And I said, just look, all that great heavenly host. And I said, everything is perfectly in harmony. And Brother Wood said, looking at two little stars so close together that it may look like a light. I said, but you know, Brother Wood, according to science, in that dipper, the little dipper, the big dipper, those stars don't look over about two inches apart and they're farther away from each other than we are from them. And if they would start to this earth, it would take at thousands of miles an hour, it would take hundreds and hundreds of years from to reach the earth. And I said, in all this great, vast system here, and yet they tell us that they look through glasses, can see 120 million years of light time way out in there, and there's still moons and stars, and, and yet God made every one of them. Amen. And He sets in the midst of them. And I said, somewhere in there, I had pointed out to me one time in an observatory, the Zodiac, beginning with the uh, Virgin, coming over through the Cancer Age, and on down until the last was the Lion, Leo the Lion, the first coming of Christ for the Virgin, the second coming by the Lion of the tribe of Judah. And I said, I've tried my best to see that zodiac and I can't see it. But yet it's there. Those who are trained know it's there. Job saw it. Man used to look at it. It was a Bible at one day. But in that whole great mass of millions and billions of, of light years, God sits in the midst of all of it. Amen. And he looks down. Paul is in there. My mother's in there. Somewhere looking down. And I thought of the order of that heavenly host. Not one of them's out of place. Everyone keeps its time perfectly. God's great army. I thought of the soldiers. How that if that moon would happen to get out of order, the earth would be covered again with water just in a few minutes. The earth would be just like it was when God decided to use it for to have us here on it. It was without form and void and darkness and water was up on the breath of the earth. And if that moon would ever move, it would do the same thing again. When the moon rocks a little bit away from the earth, the tides come up. When it goes down, this follows the tides. It's God's great army. And when I thought about the that being God's great army there, I, we went to bed and then I began to think 
Let not one of those get out of their place. They all set in place. And if there's a moving anywhere out of them, it's for a cause and will affect this earth. We just see the results of it now. From some of them moving into their other spots. It's effective. It affects everything. And I thought then, if that great heavenly host like that has to keep its place to make everything in order, what about the disorder of the earthly host? How when one gets out of order, how it throws the whole thing out of cater. The whole program of God is upset when one member gets out of order. We should continually to strive to keep the order of the Spirit. Amen. And I would to God this morning that we would bring this to a real healing service. Amen. That we could keep this part group that we have gathered under the roof this morning in such a harmony that the Holy Spirit would place every member of the body that's here this morning in such harmony till there would be such a spontaneous healing of soul and body. If we'll just hold our positions. Now, as I said at the beginning, this lady who had the cancer that Dr. Holbrook take, was going to take off, now the God that caused the fluttering noise to come into that clinic and tuck that cancer without even leaving a scar. Don't you know that same God here? Amen. And the only thing that He is waiting for is for His, his army to get their position. Like the stars. Get the position. Now, do you know we've had wars after wars and rumors of wars and if the earth stands, we'll have plenty more wars. But do you realize that there is really only two powers in all the universe? Of all of our differences between nations and differences between each other and everything, it all mounts up to two powers. Amen. There's only two powers and there's only two kingdoms. Yes. Two powers and two kingdoms. All the rest of little minor things are connected with either one of those powers. And those powers is God's power and Satan's power. Amen. That's what the, every war, every disorder, everything that comes along, it's either controlled by God's power or Satan's power. Because that's the only two powers there is. And that is the power of life and the power of death. Now that's the only two powers. And Satan can only, his power he's got is the perverted power of God. It isn't no real power. It's a perversion of God's power. Everything that Satan has, death is only a perverted life. A lie is only the truth mistold. See? Adultery is an act misused. A righteous act misused. See? Everything that Satan's got is something that was perverted. But it's a power. And we are today sitting here and one or the other power is going to control us. So let's cast out the evil one. Let's take our position like the stars of the heavens. As the Bible speaks, wandering stars over the book of Jude, foaming out their own shame. And... We don't want to be wandering stars. Wonder if this is right. Wonder if that's right. Wonder if it will happen. Wonder if how it could be. Don't wonder. Stay like those stars of the heaven as a real soldier at his post of duty. Stand there. Believing. 
Life and death. Now an army, when really an army, a nation makes ready to go against another nation, it should first sit down and figure what's right and wrong. And whether they're able to go against the next nation or not. Jesus taught that. And um, if people would do that, if the nations would, have, would sit down and stop and think those things, both sides, we would have no more war. Now we find out if a man doesn't do that, if the military heads of the nation doesn't sit down first and figure and see that they're right and their motives and objectives right, and if they have enough strength and power to overcome the next army, then they're sure to lose. That's where General Custard made his fatal mistake. General Custard, as I understand, had orders from the government not to go into the land of the Sioux because it was a religious time for them. It was a time of worship. They were having a feast, but Custard got drunk. And he thought that he would just do it anyhow. He would cross whether it was orders or not orders. And then they actually shot some innocent man. Shot at him. I think they hit some of them. It was scouts out hunting for food to feed their, their people while they were in worship. And Custard Crossing seen them and thought they were uh, after their side. And so they shot into these scouts. And these scouts escaped. Got back. What did they do? They armed themselves. And here they come, and that was the end of General Custard. Because he didn't sit down and think first. He had no business there. He had no right to be there. He pushed the Indians from the East Coast all the way across the West anyhow. And they had a treaty. But he broke the treaty. And when he broke the treaty, then he lost the battle. And so an army first in getting a ready for a battle, first has got to be a select some soldiers. They've got to be dressed for fighting. They've got to be trained for fighting. And I believe that the greatest battle that was ever fought is now ready to go in action. I believe that God has been selecting His soldiers. I believe He's been dressing them, training them. And the battle front is now set, getting ready to start. This great first battle that was ever fought began in heaven when Michael and his angels fought against Lucifer and his angels. It first started, the first battle was in heaven. So sin did not originate on earth. It originated in heaven. And then it was uh, thrown down from heaven, cast out of heaven to the earth and fell on human beings. Then the battle from angels become human battles. And Satan come to destroy God's creation. What God had created to be for Himself, He had Satan come to destroy this. That's what His purpose was, was to destroy it. Then the battle began here on earth and began in us and has been raging ever since. Now, before any battle can be put in a ray, they first have to choose a meeting ground or a place where the battle is to be fought, a selected place. In the First World War, it was so placed in no man's land and uh, places where they fought. And uh, they've got to be a place selected. Like when Israel went to war with the Philistines, there was a, a, a hill on each side where they gathered. And that's where Goliath come out. And call to the armies of Israel. That's where David met him in the valley when he passed over the little creek 
that run between the two hills, he picked up the rocks. There has to be a place selected. And in this, there's a, a mutual ground, no man's land, and they fight here, at this place. They just don't one fight over here and one down here and one run over here. There's a battlefront where they meet and test their powers. Where each army tests its strength against the other army. A mutual meeting place. Now, don't get miss this. When this great battle started on earth, there had to be a mutual meeting place. There had to be a place selected for the battle to begin and for the battle to rage. And that battle grounds begin in the human mind. That's where the battle starts. The human mind was chosen for the place of the battle where it was begin. And that is because that decisions are made from the mind, the head. Now, they never started it from some uh, organization. They never started from some uh, mechanical affair. The grounds never started there. Therefore, that organization can never, never do the work of God. Because... The battlegrounds where you've got to meet your enemy is in the mind. You've got to make your choice. It meets you. I want this little girl here that's very sick to be sure to listen now to this real closely. Decisions are made in the mind. The head. There's where Satan meets you. And the decisions are because that God made a man that way. Now I have, if you're looking on my note here, a little map drawn out. I had it here not long ago on used on the board. The human being is made up just like a grain of wheat. It's a seed. And the human being is a seed. Physically, you're the seed of your father and mother. And the life come from the father, the pup come from the mother. So the two together, the egg and the, the blood, comes together and in the blood cell is life and in there it begins to develop, making the, the child. Now any seed has a shell on the outside, the inside is pulp, and inside of the pulp is the germ of life. Well, that's the way we're made. We are body, soul, and spirit. The outside, the body, the shell... The inside of that, the conscience and so forth, is the soul. And the inside, the soul, is the spirit. And the spirit governs all the other. Now, if you'll sit down when you get home and draw three little rings, you'll find out that the outside body has five senses it's contacted by. And that is see, taste, feel, smell, hear. That's the five senses that control the human body. Inside of the body is a soul. And that soul is controlled by imaginations, conscience, memory, reasons, and affections. That's the thing that controls the soul. But the spirit is only has one sense. The spirit. Oh, let's get it. The spirit has one sense. And that sense is either dominates it is faith or doubt. That's exactly. And there's only one avenue to it that's free moral agency. You can accept doubt or you can accept faith. Either one you want to work on. Therefore, Satan began at the principal part to cause the spirit of man to doubt God's Word. God began at the principal part to lay His Word in that spirit. There you are. That's what does it. If this church right now could be put together and knitted together with such that every person would be in one accord, with not one shadow of doubt anywhere, there would not be a feeble person in our midst in another five minutes. 
There would not be nobody here desiring the Holy Ghost but what would receive it. If you could just get that certain thing fixed. Now there's where the battle begins. Right in your mind. Whether you will... Now remember, it's not Christian science now. Mind over matter. That has the, the mind accepts the life which is the Word of God and there brings the life. Just your thought doesn't do it. But the Word of God brought in the channel of your thought. See, it's not the thought. It's Christian science make it. Mind over matter. No, that isn't it. But your mind accepts it. It grasps it. What is your mind controlled by? Your spirit. And your spirit catches the Word of God. And that's the thing that's got life in it. It brings life into you. Oh, brother. When that takes place, when life comes down that channel into you, the Word of God is manifested in you. If ye abide me and my words abide in you, then ask what you will and it will be done for you. Then what does that do? From the middle of the heart, which is the soul, from there goes forth feeding every channel. The trouble of it is, we're standing in here with a lot of doubt trying to accept what's out there. You've got to stop that and come down that channel with the true Word of God and then it goes out itself automatically. It's what's on the inside. That's the thing. It counts as the inside. Satan's approach is from the inside. Now you say, I don't steal. I don't drink. I don't do these things. That has nothing to do with it. See? It's the inside. No matter how good you are, how moral you are, how truthful you are, those things are respected. But Jesus said, except a man be born again. See? There's got to be something happen inside. If you don't, that's artificial put on. For down in your heart, you desire to do it anyhow. It can't be artificial. It's got to be real. And there's only one avenue that, that can come down, and that's by the way of free moral agency. Come into the soul by your thoughts. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. If you say to this mountain, move, and don't doubt in your heart, but believe that what you have said will come to pass, you can have what you said. You get it? There you are. See, there's the battleground. If you could only get that started first. We're so anxious to see things done. We're so anxious to do something for God. This little lady is no, anxious, no doubt anxious to live. She wants to be well. Others are here wants to be well. And when we hear about uh, that case like the doctor, the resurrection of the dead, the great mighty things that our God has did, then we're anxious and the thing of it is we try to reach through these senses to grab a hold of something here like Conscience. So many people lots of times has misconstrued the word and I've been misunderstood by this for making altar calls. I said, I wasn't much on an altar call. Not meaning that you shouldn't make an altar call. But somebody gets somebody by the arms and say, Oh, Brother John, you know what? Me and you have been neighbors all this time. Come up here at the altar. Get down. What's he doing? Wish I had a blackboard here. I can show you what he's doing. He's trying to work through his soul on affections. Don't work. Amen. That's not the avenue. Amen. Certainly it isn't. Maybe he's working in the one, a memory through the sense of his soul. Oh, Brother John, you had a wonderful mother. She died a long time ago. A memory. See, you can't do that. It's got to come down the line of free moral agency. You yourself, let the Word of God. You don't come because your mother was a good woman. You don't come because you're a good neighbor. You come because that God calls you to come and you accept Him on the basis of His Word. That Word's what means everything. That Word. If you can get everything out of the way, all conscience, all senses, and just let the Word come in. That word will produce just exactly. Here. See what it's covered over with? You say, well now, 
Uh, you say, well, these consciences and senses and so forth don't have anything to do with the Brother Branham. Certainly it does. But if you let the Word come in and cover it over with conscience, then it can't grow. It'll be a deformed Word. Did you ever see a good grain of corn planted in the ground and let a stick fall over it? It'll grow crooked. Any vine, anything it grows up will, because something has hindered it. Well, that's what's the matter with our Pentecostal faith today. We've let too many things hinder it. The faith that we've been taught, the Holy Spirit that's been living in us. We've let too many things look into somebody else, and the devil's always trying to point you to somebody's failure. But he tries to keep you away from the real testimony that's genuine. He'll point you to a hypocrite sometimes who went out impersonating something. He didn't do it because he was impersonating. But if it come from the true source of the Word of God, heavens and earth will pass away, but my Word cannot pass away. Amen. It's got to stay there. You see it says? It must be accepted in the mind. Then it's believed with the heart. Then the Word of God becomes a reality. Then every senses of soul and body is just scoured out with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Then your sense of God, your conscience of God, Everything that's godly flows through you. There's not a doubt anywhere. There's nothing can rise up. There's nothing can come up in the memory and say, well, I remember Miss Jones tried to trust God, Miss so-and-so, Miss Doe tried to trust God for healing one time, and she failed. See? But if that channel has been cleared out and been purged and been filled on the inside with the Holy Spirit, that don't even come in memory. No matter about Miss Jones and what she did, it Amen. you and God together, and nobody Amen. else but you two. There you are. There's your battle. Kill him at the beginning. Stop him dead in his track. It ain't how long you can make the war linger. Just stop it right now. If you'll come and you'll keep them memories and conscience and everything, thinking about well, I might fail. It might not be right. Don't you do that at all. You throw aside everything and open up a channel and say, God, your word is eternally true. Amen. Amen. And it's for me. If the whole church fails, if the whole world fails, yet I can't fail. Because I'm taking your word. There's the battle. That's the thing. Why would Almighty God remove a cancer from a woman's breast without a scar? Let a child lay and die. No, sir. A little girl come here not long ago from the high school. Her mother called me up. Said, Brother Branham, my girl's got Hodgson's disease. That's cancer. It forms in lumps. And the doctors took a piece from a break on her throat. Sent it away and it's perfectly Hodgson's disease. So he said, the next one breaks may break over a heart. When it does, she's gone. Said she hasn't got the way they're breaking. She's got anywhere about three months to live. The mother said, what shall I do? Send her back to school. Said, let her go because she'll go probably suddenly. And said, just let her go and live a normal life as she can. Don't tell her nothing about it. So the lady said to me, what must I do? I said, bring her up and put her in the prayer line. I said, you come with her. I felt a little funny feeling. And when the little girl come by that morning with... Blue looking lips from makeup and as a school has them and, and a little thing come by. I didn't know who she'd be. She's gonna call me on the phone. I tuck her over her hand. I said, Good morning, sister. There she was. That was her. Just in a few moments, looked down to her mother and seen both of them without God, without Christ. I said, How can you expect healing on these grounds? Will you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? I said. Will you come to this pool here and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins? They said, we will do that. Oh, you know what happened? The woman may be sitting here this morning. Many of you know the case. Brother Mike Egan, one of the trustees here, what's the case? That's been about four or five years ago. The little girl was tucked back to the doctor. Not even one trace of Hodges' disease was found in her. What was the matter? You had to open the channel first. You've got to get the soldier, the Holy Spirit, placed at the battlefront that takes God's Word. He is the Word. 
And Amen. he stands there and there's nothing going to stop it then. There's nothing. Every one of the other channels is cleared out. It's like an old bar with the flu stopped up. You put a fire and it'll blow your thing up. That's what's the matter so many blowed up Christians. It's because that they don't clean the channels out. They don't go down to the inside. You've got to clean it. Conscience. Memory. Thoughts. Laying aside everything and coming from the inside out with that unadulterated Word of God that it's the truth. No matter if 10,000 died on this side today trusting, 10,000 died on that side tomorrow trusting, that has nothing to do with me. I'm the individual. I'm the one that's trusting. I'm the one that believes it. And we see back under, if we want to open up our channels and if we can and see, we find this and that and this and that and thousands of them testifying. But the devil will try to come right back, see if he can get in there at all. He's got your army routed right there. If you've got your senses, see, taste, feel, smell, and hear, they're all right. But don't trust them unless they agree with the Word. They're all right, but if they disagree with the Word, don't you listen to them. Now, imaginations, conscience, memories, reasons, and affections. They're all right if they agree with the Word. But if your affection doesn't agree with the Word, get rid of it. You blow a flu right quick. If your reason disagrees with the Word, get away from it. That's right. The ancient, if your memory, if your imaginations, if your conscience, anything disagrees with that what's on the inside, get rid of it. What you got then? You've got a solar system. Hallelujah. As God set the stars in order and said, Hang there till I call you. They stay there. Nothing's going to move them. When God can get a man in his hands till he can get senses, conscience, everything cleaned out until it stands with God behind it in the Spirit. There's not a devil in the world can poke it out in there. Hallelujah. Right? If you come around and say you don't feel any better, your conscience is even gone to that. The flu is so clear, it shouts hallelujah. (laughs) The outlet blows a whistle. Glory to God, it sounds out. (laughs) Just as clean and clear for the Word of God to work through, the power of God. See? That's the main thing. There's your battleground. Your battleground is back here at the beginning. Back here in the soul. Back in your mind that opens. The, the mind is the gate to the soul. The gate to the spirit, rather. Amen. Your mind opens up and accepts the spirit. Or it rejects the spirit. You can have little consciousness and little feelings and little sensations. All these things, that has nothing to do with it. That's just little sensations and things. But when it comes to reality, your mind opens it up. Amen. Your mind either accepts it or rejects it. That's it, friends. God, let none of them miss it. See? It's your mind that opens up the door or closes the door and listens to your conscience, listens to your memory, listens to your affections. But when your mind closes itself to these things and let God, the Spirit of His Word, come in, it blows the rest of the stuff out. Every doubt is gone. Every fear is gone. Every sensation of doubt is gone. Every feeling is gone. There's nothing standing there but the Word of God. And Satan cannot battle against that. No, sir. He cannot battle against it. Now, we know that's true. These battles has raged since the day of the Garden of Eden. The battle in the human mind. Satan started it. What did he do when he met Eve? He didn't deny God's Word, but he whitewashed it. He stopped up some little channels here somewhere. He said, but surely God, Genesis 3, 1. He, surely God. All these things that he, he, he promised. He knew the Word was right, but he knew he couldn't just come right out and blast it out uh, blary like that, but he, he, he sugar-coated it. Like Mama used to get us to take medicine and she'd try to put orange juice and castor oil. Might just rather take the castor oil without the orange juice. Anything that's hypocritical. See, she used to have to get up at night time and she'd give us coal oil for croup. And she'd put coal oil and put sugar on it. See, kind of hypocritical, but just burn your tonsils out nearly going down. 
at the sugar lamp. Well, that's the way it is, friend. Satan tries to, to be hypocritical about it. He tries to show you something better, an easier way, a more sensible plan. But there is no more sensible plan than that God laid down at the beginning. His Word. Hold that Word. Get a grip on it. Let it get a grip on you. And stay there with it. That's the, that's the thing. The battle raged when Eve opened up her mind to listen to her reasoning. That's the fluid come in. That's the, the channel that run down. Her reasoning. She in her soul. She reasoned. Her eyes were sight. She saw the serpent. He's beautiful. Handsome. Far better than her own husband. He's the most substal of all the beasts of the field. And he was probably a fairer man than her husband. He looked like a great masculine beast standing there. How great he was. And he was trying to tell her what a great thing it was. And first thing she did, she opened up her mind. And when she did, human reasonings call it. Why wouldn't that be a thrill? That's the thing he does to a woman today. Some woman with a lovely little husband. Find some great big masculine man. This man will try to open you up the reasons. Remember, that's Satan. Amen. That's the devil. Yeah. Or vice versa. Man to woman, woman to man. Either way, what does he do? Work in that reasoning power. That conscience. Or something he begins to move through. But give God's word the first place. Amen. A man can't even come to God. He can't sin. Hallelujah. There it is. This is coming fresh. <laughs> A man cannot sin until first he casts aside God's Word. Amen. He can't even sin. Hallelujah. That's disbelief. Until first he gets rid of the Word of God. The presence of God. He cannot sin. Eve could not sin until she laid aside God's Word. Opening up her channel of reasons to her soul. And begin to reason. Why, certainly, my husband's never told me these things. But uh, I believe that you... He told me I shouldn't do this. But, you know, you make it so real. It's so plain. I, I believe it would be wonderful. Because you're making it so plain to me. See, there was the first battle. And through that battle has caused every other one and every bloodshed that ever come was caused right there at Eden. She disbelieved God's Word. And if one little iota of God's Word was disbelief, caused all this trouble, how are we going to get back disbelieving the Word? You can't do it. You've got to shut off all these other things, conscience, memories, and say reasonings, and all these other things, casting down reasonings. We don't reason about it all. Nothing at all. We just accept the Word upon the basis God said so and it sets a stream between you and God. Every channel comes open between you and God then. There's the battle. The very first front line. Let's not use a twenty two rifle. Let's get a, an atomic bomb. <laughs> Let's do the job right. Let's get God's atomic bomb. Why is it, Brother Branham? F-A-I-T-H in His Word. That's God's atomic bomb that blows sickness and devils right and left. It, it annihilates them. Discriminates. Oh, it, it's, it just destroys. It disintegrates everything that's ungodly. When that bomb of faith drops in there with the Word of God behind it, it blows every devil, every sickness, every disease. Hey. You say, is that right, Brother Bramman? Why does it on some and not on others? It's because of the channel. You can look out and see it. But you've got to have it in here looking this way. Not out there looking in. You've got to be in looking out. Amen. You can't come through reason. You can't come through these other things. You've got to come right down God's channel of it. Right into the soul. Now how do you do it? What's the last channel? It'll reach right on down. You say, senses. Oh, I, I can feel it. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> oh, I, I might smell it or so forth. These things are there. Yeah. Next thing you reason well... It looks like he ought to know what he's talking about. The doctor says I can't get well. That ought to be... You see, right there, you're, you're wrong. That's the devil standing there. That's the devil poking these things into you. 
Don't you believe it? Hallelujah. God's Word said, I, above all things, I wanted you to prosper in hell. That's right. How can you be a real soldier out there? I want you to prosper in hell. There it is right there, those channels. You just get them open up. Don't just bypass them. Then if Satan can get through there, get by these conscience and all these other things, then he gets right down here to the end of the soul in the mind. Now, if he can just get you, you'll never, you'll never look at one of them until first you have to let him in here. Amen. You have to let him in. Then when he gets in, he's got control. Then what does he do? He begins to use the conscience. He begins to use this. Begin to use this outlet. What is it? See, taste, feel, smell, hear. Imaginations, conscience, memory, reasons, affections. He begins to use all those different little channels as long as he can get in above this one here. He's got to come in your mind first and you have to accept it. It can, listen, it can batter against you, but it can't get to you until you accept it. Amen. Help us to see it. When Satan walked up to Eve and said, you know, the fruit's pleasant. She stopped for a moment. Oh, that's when she made a mistake. Amen. When she stopped for a moment. Oh, Don't stop for nothing. Amen. You got the message. Amen. Jesus lives. Amen. God's a healer. Amen. That's the message. Don't stop for nothing. No reasonings, no nothing else. Amen. But she stopped for a moment. That's when Satan walked right into that mind. I said, well, it sounds reasonable. Huh. Don't do that. Just take what God said. Abraham, what if he stopped for reasonings? When he told him he's going to have a baby with Sarah and she was 65 and him 75. And when he was 100 and she was, a, and she was 90, he still, he, he, he confessed that God's word was true and he called those things which were not as though they were. See? He, he, uh, uh, even hope. Was there any hope? He didn't even use hope. Well, you say, I, I hope I can get all right. I hope I'll be well. I hope I get the Holy Ghost. I hope I'm a Christian. I hope I do this. You don't want that. Amen. Abraham never even looked at that. Amen. Amen. Against hope, he still believed God's Word. Amen. Faith is beyond hope. Faith comes from back here on the inside. Faith comes from here. How does it get in? Through this mind. This, this door. The battlefront standing there. Now... When you get the battle set in array, now the devil's setting right to every heart this morning. He's setting this little girl's heart. He's setting at your hearts. He's setting all around there. He's saying, Oh, I've seen a try before. I've heard that before. Cast him out. That's all. Cast him out. What did the Bible say here? Our text? Casting him out. That's right. Casting him out. We've been trained. I think what's the matter with us preachers? I wonder what kind of training we've had. Help us, Lord. God's training for this great battle. Help us, Jesus. Matthew 24 said there, and also Daniel 12 said, there would be a time of trouble such as never like on the earth before. And we're living in that time when culture and education and things are smothered over the Word of God and got into reasonings and so forth. The battle is now. Who will stand? Hallelujah. The battle's ready to go in. She's ready now. Look what a great opposition we got down here. Who will be like David said, You stand and let that uncircumcised Philistine defy the armies of the I'll go fight him. Oh, Amen. Amen. God wants men and women this morning who can raise up and say, I'll take the Lord at His word. Amen. Amen. No matter what failed, where this and that and what that and did, that has nothing to do with it. Amen. You souls and so forth, if you're afraid of Him, get back where you belong. But God's army is moving far. Amen. Amen. Man of valor. Man of, of, of faith. Man of power. Man of understanding. They don't have to be smart. They don't have to be educated. They have to be channels. God takes those little channels. She stopped for a moment to reason. Saying, well, now let's see. Well, just like, uh, what if uh, this little lady this morning, no doubt that the doctors told her she's just about the end of the road. There's nothing to be done. Well, now, that's the, that doctor, I don't condemn him. That man is a scientific man. He sees that the disease has conquered the child's body. It's beyond anything. He has got a medicine that will stop it. So that cancer conquered that woman. Sure, death had conquered that baby. 
But our chief captain, hallelujah, of this great army, he is a resurrection of life. Nothing can conquer him. Hallelujah! The brains of the army lays in its captains. The intelligence, Rommel, in Germany was the brains of Germany. Not Hitler, Rommel. That's right. Eisenhower, military man, Patton, those men who were at the front, it depended on which way they gave the order. You follow your captain. If he's a right kind of a general, if he's a right kind of, he's a four-star general, if he's proved, if he's been proven to be right, follow him. Though it may seem wrong to you, go on to the front. Do as he told you. Hallelujah. We got a five-star general from J-E-S-U-S placing five stars on us. F-A-I-T-H. He's never lost a battle. Hallelujah. He conquered death, hell, and the grave. Get the devil down the way. He's the great chief captain. So the devil isn't even the picture. The greatest battle has ever raised is sitting right ready now. Certainly it is. Oh, hallelujah. When I think of it, when I stood and watch him do things, see him reveal things, open up things, say it'll be this way and that way, and there it is. Oh, I look back here and say, who is this great captain? Oh, I don't look back and see if it's doctor so-and-so. I see what the captain said. He's the captain of our salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. What is salvation? Deliverance. Yes. All right. He's the captain of our deliverance. Amen. The great hour of charge is at hand. Hallelujah. Soldier with armors gleaming, color streaming. Praise Him. Faith and doubt is Hallelujah. setting yourself in array in this tabernacle this morning. Oh, doubt on one side, faith on the other. Soldiers, yeah, that's your post of duty. Hallelujah, our captain, the morning star leads on. Yeah, he never goes back. He never don't know the word retreat. You don't have to retreat. Yeah, Amen. Amen. Certainly, the greatest battle ever fought. She's going on right in here now. Yes, sir, between life and death, between sickness and health, between faith and doubt. Oh, my, between liberty and bondage. The battle is on. Shine your spears, soldiers. Polish up the armor. God's getting His soldiers ready. Amen. God anoints His army. America dresses their soldiers in the best that they can have to dress with. Steel helmets and armors and whatever they got. Armored tanks, whatever they go in. God dresses His army. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What kind of equipment do we use? The spirit of the sword, the Word of God. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. The Word of God sharper than a two-edged sword. Hebrews 4. Amen. Piercing even to the sunder of the bone, even to the mire of the bone, even a the discerner of the thoughts of the mind. The Word of God. To believe His Word. And that's why God armors. That's what He gave Eve to armor herself with. And she broke her armor down. How'd she do it? By opening up her mind. To reason. You don't reason with God's Word. It has no reason. You, it's just God's Word. There's no, there's no doubt about it. There's no reasoning to it. It's God's Word. That settles it. That's got it. That settles Hallelujah. it forever. See what I mean, honey? It's God's Word. God promised it. Amen. God said so. I said, Abraham, I ain't going to have that baby. God said so. Yeah. Amen. That settled it. Well, why ain't you got it? I don't know when I'm going to get it, but I'm going to get it. God said so. Amen. That won't stop me a bit. He called. Why don't you go on back to your home where you come from? I'm to be a pilgrim and a stranger in this land. Amen. God give the promise. God will give the baby right in this land where He sent me. Hallelujah. God will heal you. Amen. Right in this atmosphere of the Holy Ghost where He sent you. Amen. God will give it to you if you just believe it. Amen. Amen. Open up them flues of the soul and body, senses and conscience. And just let God's words penetrate first. Take that mind. There's the battleground. Not say, well, if I could feel it, if I could feel the glory of God falling over, it has nothing to do with it. Not a thing. Open up that mind. That's the battleground. 
There's where the battle sets in array. Right here in the front line. You're mine. Open it up and say, I ever doubt, I doubt my doubts. <laughs> I'm doubting my doubts now. I'm believing God's work. Here I come, Satan. Something's going to take place. Sure it will. Yes, sir. He anoints His servants with His Spirit. He sends them angels. People make fun of that sometimes. Angels. Let me, let me turn to something here with you just a minute. Let's turn over here to Hebrews, just a minute. Hebrews, the fourth chapter. <clears throat> fourth chapter, and let's, uh, I mean the first chapter of Hebrews. And let's turn to the 14th verse. Are not all these ministering spirits sent, from, sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Amen. Which one of the angels did he say, Set thou on my right hand, all the angels of God? Now here the Bible comes right back and tells us here that God sends forth angels. Amen. Amen. What are they? What are they? Ministering spirits. Yes. Amen. Glory. Amen. Ministering Amen. spirits sent where? From the presence of God. Yes. What to do? Minister His Word. Amen. 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 And not to minister some theology of some right. denominational group, but to minister His Word. Amen. That's it. Ministering spirits sent forth. How do we know they are? The Bible said that the word of the Lord came to the prophets. Amen. Is that right? Amen. These angels ministry His word through His Spirit. Minister the word through the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit and the word came to the prophets. And the prophets had the word of God. That's the reason they could do the miracles that they did. It wasn't the man. It was the Spirit of God in the man. Amen. The Spirit of Christ in the man. For the Word of God, what had He done? Cleaned out every channel. God had chosen. And He was anointed with the Holy Ghost. And it wasn't Him. He never did anything till He saw it in the vision. Elijah said on Mount Carmel, all this I've done at Your command. Now, Lord, let it be known that Amen. Thou art God. Oh, glory to God. I've seen it so many times. When you see the Spirit of God strike a place. And that place get under the anointing. If this little group in here this morning just could just take this mind here, get every doubt out of the way, how can you doubt anymore? When you see the dead, the dead raised up, the lame walk, the blind see, the deaf here, the angel of the Lord, even his picture hanging here on the wall, has got signs stumped everywhere. What does he do? Stay right with the word. Yeah. Amen. 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 It cuts every devil. Amen. Hallelujah. How's it done? What is it, the ministering spirits sent from the presence of God to anoint the speakers of the Word that stays with the Word? Amen. And He confirms the Word with signs following. Amen. Praise the Lord. Brings Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. There He is. How could we doubt when He's both scientifically, materially, spiritually, every way that can be proved, He's proved here. What's the matter? It's in our minds. We open our minds to the things and say, well, I, I don't know whether it could be or not. Maybe if I feel better tomorrow, hold, oh, I don't have one thing to do with it. Uh, I've often said, Abraham might have said to Sarah, she's a past the age of, of being a woman. You know what I mean. It's time of life for 28 days. See, she is 65 years old. She's probably past it for 15, 20 years. And he said to her, maybe the next few days, he said, you feel any different, dear? Not a bit of different. I don't have one thing to do with it. We're going right on anyhow. Well, now, if you start back as a, a young woman again, we know it through that blood of life. Well, then we find out there that it's going to cushion the baby and everything will be all right. Now, do you feel any different today? It's been a month since he promised me. Do you feel any different here? Not a bit, Abraham. It's not a sign of nothing. I, I'm still just like I, I have been now for the last few years. It's not a bit of difference. Glory to God. We're going to have it anyhow. Amen. Do you mean, Abraham? Upon, look, if he promised you, surely he'd give us a sign this way. Surely you give us a sign. <laughs> Hallelujah. A weak and adulterous generation seeks after signs. Oh, yeah, That's yeah. right. Help he us. had a sign. What was it? God's Word. Amen. That was a sign. Oh. How could God heal His child? God's Word said so. Right. If I feel a sensation or no sensation, if I, no matter what happens, God said so. Amen. That settled it. Abraham said, get your bonnets and everything together. We're taking off to the land. Where are you going? I don't know. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But we're going anyhow. Here we go. Pack 
backed up and going. Hallelujah. That's a real Word of God. What was the hole in front of him? The promise of God, the Word of God. Amen. We're going to have it. Come out from amongst your people, Abraham. The thing of it is, there are doubters and unbelievers, and they'll have you in the same fix. Come on out and separate yourself and live for me. What is it? Leave all your conscience and senses behind you like that. Open up your mind and remember it's me. Come live with me. Amen. God's calling every seed of Abraham this morning to that same kind of a life. The great battle is on now. Worldwide. God wants His children separating themselves from what? See, taste, feel, smell, hear, imaginations, conscience, memories, reason, affections. Everything. Open up their mind and let the Word come in and watch with the Word. That's a real soldier. That's the way the stars stand. The solar system hasn't changed. The zodiac, the morning star, rises on its post of duty every morning just exactly the way it did when the earth is created. The evening star takes its place. Every star, the little dipper, right at the time of season, is just exactly where it's supposed to be. The north star stands steady and never moves. Hallelujah. Amen. The whole thing revolves around the north star. All the rest of them. Because it's right in the center of the earth. That's Christ. Amen. He stands there. Command his army like a great captain. Amen. Like Moses is on the mountain with his hands up. Uh, and Israel is fighting, cutting their way through him. And he stood with his hands up. He stood with his hands up until the sun went down. They had to hold his hands up. Yeah. That was Moses. He was a type of Christ. Yeah. Be sure that his hands stayed up. His hands was nailed up. Yeah. On the cross. Hallelujah. And he climbed the ramparts of glory today with his bloody garments before God at the right hand of his majesty there and the battle to every soldier will cut his way through I don't care what takes place with the word of God he'll cut himself to freedom uh, like a chicken in a, a egg what if he's afraid to peep what if he's afraid to pick the egg what if the little chicken inside the egg a little bird was afraid to hit the egg shell what if he'd heard a sound on the outside said don't hit that shell it might hurt yourself but nature itself in the bird tells him, pack it! Amen. Knock a hole in it! <laughs> Let all the old organizations say, days of miracles past, you're going to hurt yourself, you're going into fanaticism, pick right against the shell, it's as hard as you can. Hallelujah! Amen. Satan, give away! I'm coming out of here! Amen. Amen. I'm not laying here anymore, I'm not sitting here anymore, I'm not on this old devil's ground no more, I'm pipping my way out this morning! Amen. I'm an eagle. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. That little Hallelujah. eagle, that trip hammer neck back there pecking against that shell. No matter how hard the shell was, it pecked right on to it. First thing you know, he could flop his wings a little. He was all right. Peck your way out. That's right. How do you do it? Blasting it with, Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Finally, you begin to smell some fresh air. Amen. Thus saith the Lord. Get your head on the outside. Thus saith the Lord. Push hard now. You're coming out. Amen. He never goes back to the shell again. Amen. He's free. Oh my, that word once gets set down to all those senses and consciences. Amen. It gets settled down here. That mind opens up and that's it. Oh God, have mercy. There's never nothing to bondage it again. You're Amen. free. He who the Son has made free is out of the shell. Your denomination can never call you back. The devil can never do anything more to you. You're hissing out of them, but you're on the highway running at the high speed. Oh my, running up the king's highway. Anointed soldier of the cross. Hallelujah. All you eagles with faith proclaim. Amen. Jesus, the light of the world. Run up the king's highway. Sure. Yes, sir. These are ministering spirits sent from the presence of God to be ministers. To minister what? His Word. Not some theology, but God's Word. They're a ministering spirit sent forth from God to minister. Ministering spirits. Oh, and remember, if it ministers something besides the Word, it didn't come from God. Because our Word is always confirmed in heaven. Amen. Always in heaven, the Word, God watches over it. And He'll never send a spirit to minister something besides the Word. He'll ever send a spirit with a great big DDD, PhD, and his collar turned around the back, and everything like that, and say, Well, of course, the days of miracles just passed. We all know that. No, no, that didn't come from God. Amen. It's contrary to the Word. Amen. Amen. He sends the one that ministers the spirit of the Word. Amen. Amen. 
Oh, I had about four or five more things, but I'll let it go at this time. Pick it up next Sunday. All right, Satan and his demons are anointed. If these angel spirits are anointed to bring you the Word, to cause you to believe the Word, now could you see we ever hear a prophet, a real prophet of God, denying God's Word? No, sir. What happened when the organizations of their days raised up and said, now he's wrong. He stood by himself and stood alone. He said, it's right. Look at Micah down there that day. The little holy roller. See? Son of Ammon. There was 400 anointed, supposed to be, anointed prophets standing up there all well fed and fixed and great big degrees and highly educated and polished scholars say, go up our loyal king. The Lord be with you. That belongs to us. Joshua, give it to us. So you go up and take it. That's exactly right. You go up and take it. What? He said, well, Joshua, you know, Jehoshaphat said, isn't there another one somewhere? Well, they had 400. Why not believe the 400? He said, but surely you got another one somewhere. He said, I, I, well, we have got one. There is another one. But oh, I hate him. <laughs> all right, all right, that's God I'd like to listen to. They bring him up. Let's see what he's going to say. And so they went and told him, said, now listen, you've set your sermon just right this morning because you're preaching to the king. <laughs> you're preaching to the, all the, the ministerial association of uh, so-and-so, you see, <laughs> of Palestine. The whole ministerial association. Now, you remember, here's what they said. You say the same thing. You believe the same thing. A little, he, he had the wrong man there. <laughs> that man had done got away from this old reasoning. He done cleaned the flues out, see yeah. His conscience and... Well, well, you know what they'll do? If you'll say the same thing, I imagine they'll make you a district presbyter. They probably will. They'll, they'll make you general overseer of the local district here if you, if you disagree with them. That wasn't a real man of God. Why, his flues had been cleaned out? All his conscience and everything clear? His mind had opened up to the Word of God and the Word of God only would he believe. Amen. That's ministered spirits. That's a ministered spirit. He said, I don't know what to say now, but I'll tell you this one thing. I'll only say what God tells me to say. Amen. So he waited that night. He had a vision. The next morning I can imagine Micah looking through the Scriptures and saying, now let's see now. Does that vision, uh, out of all them man, there's something wrong here. Some work because it's contrary to what they said. But what did it say? Let's see what... Elijah said back here, the prophet, because we know he was a prophet. See what the word of the Lord came to Elijah, yeah? And what did he say? And the dog shall lick your blood. Jezebel, the dog lead her. And cause a righteous Ahab, a righteous uh, uh, Naboth. And he said then, when he seen that, he seen that his vision was just straight with the word of God. That, that old Ahab had it coming to him. He walked right out there and said, What? <laughs> But I've seen Israel. See, he wasn't ashamed to tell his vision then because it was the word of the Lord. He knew he could take that thing just perfectly. What? He had opened his heart, his mind to the word of God. And the word of God had been revealed back. So he knew that was perfectly the word of God. Amen. Now you say, oh, if I could only be a Micah. You can be. Amen. You are. Amen. You are too, honey. You're a Micah. The prophet. What can you do? Open your mind. What am I trying to tell you this morning? The Word of the Lord. Amen. See? Open your mind and say, Now, you know, I do believe I can be healed. Well, what is it then? Is it the Word of the Lord? Sure, it's the Word of the Lord. And this guy here says, The days of miracles is past. You can't do this. Anymore. Forget about it. Put God Amen. first. Amen. Here comes the Word of the Lord. And he spoke it. And it was so. Now, what did Satan do? Satan had the others anointed. Now, Satan anoints his servants. Yeah. Oh, sure. Mm-hmm. Sure. He anoints his servants. What does he anoint them with? With unbelief. Satan and his demons anoint humanity to disbelieve God's Word. Now, if you want to confirm that, you turn to Genesis 3, 4. Let's just turn back here and listen to this just a minute and see if that is his first tactic. That's the first thing he did. He never leaves the same tactics. He does it all the time. Now, just see if that, that's what it is. Now, he didn't disagree with the Word. He just calls her kind of... Uh, misconstrue it a little, you know, just kind of make it sound like the way he wanted it to sound. Don't take the whole word. Now, Genesis, um, I got here Genesis 3 and 4. Let's see if that's what that says now. All right. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. Not surely die. See how he quoted around? Oh, we believe the days of miracles is past. We don't believe there is such a thing as people receiving the Holy Ghost like they did on Pentecost. Oh, Anyway, you're baptized, it doesn't make any difference. See the devil? See his tactics? 
Well, if the doctor told you you can't get well, that settles it. Now, not disgraced and dis, dis, uh, believing the doctor. The doctor is working on the line of scientific. And the doctor has done everything he can to save the person's life. And it can't be saved because there's nothing else he knows to do. He's at the end of his wits. The man's honest. But now, the tree of knowledge is all right. But when you go as far as it'll go, then step off on the tree of life. And just keep on going. <laughs> Amen. That's it. It'll just work so far. Yeah. Now, what is the Satan's tactics now? What did he say here? I'll watch the, the one. And the, the second verse. Now, let, let me read the first verse here, three. Now the serpent was the most substantial than all any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, has God said, Ye shall not eat every tree of the garden. Listen at him now, just how nasty he gets and how he whitewashes that word. See, what's he trying to do? Get into her mind. See, he's talking to her after the word was already fortified there. Now don't you let Satan fortify Nothing, see? You keep God's Word fortified in your heart. See? You do the same. You might have. The woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but, the, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst, middle, see, of the garden, God said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. See? Now that's the Word. She's quoting it back to him. Now what? And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. See his tactics? See? What's he trying to do? That first human being! He's trying to anoint that precious woman there, God's daughter, with an unbelief in God's Word. Amen. That's exactly what he's trying to get her to do. That's what he tried to get you to do, honey. That's what he tried to get each one of you to do out there. Anoint you. And the only thing you have to do now, you're a free moral agent. Now, you can accept it if you want to. But kick it out! Amen. If Eve had to stop that moment to listen, don't stop for nothing. Don't stop. When, uh, when Elijah told Gehazi, said, take my staff. Go lay it on the dead baby. And if any man even speaks to you, don't speak back. If any tries to stop you, just keep going. Look at the woman when she called her servant. She said, saddle a mule. And go forward. And don't you even stop till I bid you. Amen. When you got the message, keep going. Amen. Amen. Say, I can't walk up again. No, I'm getting weak. Just keep on going. Don't stop. Lay everything aside. Just keep cutting through. Brother, you got the sword in your hand. Just keep chopping it. I went into a football stadium one time and was going to preach. And I stopped at the door, looked up, up there and said, it's not the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. <laughs> so that's what wins the battle. See? You say, well, look, look at all the great churches are against this. I don't care what size they are. It's the fight that's in the dog. That's what counts. It's the faith that's in the individual. If you're a coward, get back to your cuddle hole. But brother, if you're a soldier, stay out there. There's a battle on. Right and wrong's engaged. Let's fight. Hallelujah. Like Peter Cartwright. Went into the city and said, Lord, told me that. Uh, come in here and have a revival. We were in an old storeroom, got in there and began to clean it up. And the big bully of the town with a pistol hanging on his side walked down the God door. Some of them said, What's that guy doing down there? I said, He's a preacher. He's going to have a meeting, he said. Well, he said, Guess I'll just have to go down, throw him out in the street, and run him out of here. That's all. We don't want no meetings around our place. So he goes down there, stops the door, and Peter Cartwright had his coat on, you know, and he's just washing the windows and walls down. Little bitty fellow, you know. The old preacher laughed at him, you know, for eating chicken with his hands, which is adequate today, you know. So he was just washing the windows and fixing around. The big bully walked over, pulled his coat back, pistol hanging on his side, said, What are you doing? Oh, he said, I'm washing the windows. And he kept on washing the windows, you know. He had one purpose. God told him to hold a revival. Washing the windows on down, he said, We all allow revivals around here. He said, Oh, but the Lord told me to, to hold this revival. See, he just kept on. How did his work? We said there's one thing you have, you have to understand. He said, I run this town around here. He said, oh, you do. And he just kept on washing the windows. He said, before you have a revival, you have to whip me first. He said, oh, I do. Well, I'll just do that next. Then he just took off his coat. <laughs> Walked over there, reached by the collar, knocked him down the floor, jumped up on top of him. said, I must fight if I should ring and increase my courage. The Lord pound the tar out of him. said, he got enough. He said, yes. <laughs> He got up and shook his hand. He got saved that night in church. There you are. See? It's take the Word of God and cut your way to every doubt. 
you? Sure. That's it. That's the next job. Let's get it done. <laughs> right? Next thing I'll do is get away my doubts. Cut it down. That's my next job. Get all my frustrations away. If my senses tell me, well, you feel bad, next thing you do is cut that thing away. That's right. You say, well, you, they tell me that, uh, you know, my conscience tell me, Brother Bram, that I can Well, you might as well cut that thing away. You can go get them farther than that. That's right. Amen. Just get your next job done. Take off your coat and wear right into it. Just keep on going. One objective, I'm going to win. Amen. I can't lose. I'm going to win. Amen. Satan anoints. See, what's his first tactic? What was his first place to get? The mind. She stopped for a moment to listen to what he said. Oh, you don't say so. That's where many little females made her mistake. And many little male made his mistake. Right. Stop for a moment. Just stop for a moment. How many times have I seen divorce cases and things come before me? Well, I tell you, Brother Bram, he whistled like the... You know, and I stopped and honest, I, I didn't mean to. <laughs> there you are. Oh, she, I was sitting across the table from her. She, she had pretty eyes. That's it. That's it. The devil does the same thing. Oh, the doctor told me I couldn't get well, so I... Same thing. The greatest battle that ever was fought. Well, they tell me, I've seen so-and-so claim to have the Holy Ghost. Yeah, you looked at some old hypocrite. How about them that really had it? Yeah. Yeah, the devil appoints you some old crow bait, but he won't show you the real dove. That's right. He won't show you that, and he'll keep that blinded from you. Oh, he's a warrior too. Remember, but greater is, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Behold to God's Word. Believe it, you captains of the army here. Hold your fort, brother. That's right. Hold your post of duty. So, I had a little girl here one time. A lady may be sitting here now. Her name is Nellie Sanders. One of the first times I've ever seen a devil cast out. We lived, um, I don't know if I could just get the place and be just about three blocks up here beyond the graveyard. And I'd just become a preacher. And I was preaching right here on this corner with a tent meeting. And that little girl was one of the best dancers. She went to high school down here and her and Lee Horn. And many of you here in town know Lee Horn. Now, here runs a pool room. And that. So, they... um. Uh, her and Lee Horn was the best dancers there was in the country. He's Catholic himself. Of course, religion didn't mean that to them. So then, um, Nellie and them, so she was a great dancer and he was too. And they had this year dance called Black Bottom and Jitterbugs and all that thing. And she was, uh, uh, them two was the best in the country. One day she staggered in up here one night to the meeting. There she fell down at the altar. Little Nellie, bless her heart. She laid there at the altar. She raised up her head and she cried and the tears run down her cheeks. She said, Billy, she knew me. She said, I want to be saved so bad. And I said, Nellie, you can be saved. Jesus already saved you, girl. You had to accept it now upon the basis of His Word. And she stayed there and she cried and she prayed. And she told God she'd never listen to the things of the world again. All at once, a lovely, sweet peace come over her soul. She raised up from there shouting and praising God. Glorifying God. And about six or eight months after that, she's coming down Spring Street one night. And I just see a young girl. She's just her teenage, about 18 years old. And she come to me and she said, Hope, as my wife, the one that's gone on, she said, I wish I looked like Hope and Irene. She said, you know, they never did get out in the world. Said, the world puts a mark on you. Said, I got a rough look. Said, now I quit wearing makeup and stuff, but I look so rough. Even my cast in my face, she said, I look rough. She said, they look so innocent and tender. Said, I wish I'd never done that. Said, Nellie, the blood of Jesus Christ cleans us from all sin, honey. You won't believe it. Wayne Bledsoe, many of you know him here, a bosom friend of mine years and years. He is a drinker. And he come up here with my brother Edward, and he got drunk down here in the street, and I picked him up because cops was going to get him. And I brought him up here, and I was a preacher, and lived up here with my mom and papa's way before I was married. And um, I took him, put him in the bed in there. I sleep, slept on a duo floor. There's a big bunch of brands, you know, ten of us. And so we had about four rooms, and we had to kind of double up a little. So I had an old duo floor I slept on, and I pulled it out like this and, and put Wayne to bed with me, drunk, had to pack him in the house and lay him down. I was laying there, I said, Wayne, don't you ashamed yourself? And I got, Duh, Billy, don't talk to me like that. And then I put my hand around and said, go pray for you, Wayne. God bless you. And I've been saved about, oh, I guess about maybe a year. And so then, uh, uh, all at once, a, a cab slammed the door outside. And somebody knocked on the heart. Brother Bill! Brother Bill! Oh, my goodness, somebody must be dying. I jumped up the door, grabbed my old thing there, throw it around my pajamas like this and covered Wayne up and run the door outside. It was like a woman. I opened the door. And this young girl stands at the door. She said, oh, can I come in? I said, come in. And I turned the lights on. Now she's just crying like that. And she said, oh, Billy, I'm, I'm, I'm gone. I'm gone. I said, what's the matter, Nellie? You got a, got a heart attack? 
She said, no. She said, Brother Bill, I was coming down spring. She said, honest, Brother Bill, honest, Brother Bill, I didn't mean no harm. I didn't mean no harm. I said, what's the matter? I thought, what am I going to do with her now? I didn't know what to do. I just a young fella, and I said, oh, Brother Bill said, I miss, I miss, I miss all the pieces. I said, I'm quite down, sis. Tell me all about it. And she said, well, she said, I was coming down the street and the Redmond's Hall, and they used to have Saturday night dances there. And she said, I had some stuff that was going home to make me a dress. And she said, I heard that music. And she said, you know, that I stopped just a minute. And said, it kept getting better. So I thought, you know, it won't hurt if I stand right here. That's where she made her mistake. Stop for a moment. She just listened and said, well, I'm going to think, said, oh, Lord, you know I love you. Oh, said, you know I love you, Lord. But I can sure remember the time when Lee and I used to win all the uh, cups and so forth. Said, my, I remember that old music used to attract me. Don't now. Oh, oh, oh you just think it, don't. It's already got you right there. That's just as good as he wants right there. See? How many ever know Nellie Sanders? Well, I guess a whole lot of you. Yeah, sure. So they, they was... Um, there was said. Uh, uh, she said, "Well, you know what? Said maybe if I walk up on the steps up there, said maybe I'll be able to testify to some of them." <laughs> You're right on the devil's ground. Right. Stay out of it. Shun the very appearance of evil. But she walked up the top of the steps and stood there a few minutes. And the first thing you know, she's in some boy's arms out on the floor. And then she come to herself, and she was standing there crying and going on. Said, "Oh, I'm lost now for good." I thought, "Well, I don't know too much about the Bible, but I believe Jesus said this." In my name they shall cast out devils. I said, and Wayne had done sobered up a little bit and was sitting there watching, see. So I said, Now, devil, I don't know who you are. But I'm telling you now, this is my sister. And you ain't got no business with her holding her. She didn't mean to do that. She just stopped for a minute. That's where she made a mistake. Oh. I said, But you're going to have to come out of her. You hear me? And so help me, God at the judgment bar, no, that screen door began to open and shut in by itself. Plumpity, plumpity, there at the door. Plump, the plump, the plump. I thought, and she said, Bill, look at there, look at there. And I said, Yeah, what is that? She said, I don't know. And I said, Neither do I. And the door goes plump, the plump, the plump, shutting like that. I thought, What's the matter here? What's the matter? And I looked in like that, and I said, Leave her, Satan! In Jesus' name, come out of her! When I said that, it looked like a great big bat about this long, rose up from behind her with long hair hanging down out of its wings and off of its feet like that. It's going, started right towards me, just as hard as it come. I said, oh, Lord God, the blood of Jesus Christ protect me from that. And Wayne jumped up in the bed. Look, and there it was like a big shadow, circled around and went over and went down behind the bed. Out of the bed went Wayne in the next room as hard as he could. So we, I got Nellie and took her home and come back and I couldn't. Mom went in there and shook the sheets and everything. There wasn't nothing in that bed. What was it? A devil went out of her. What happened? She stopped for a moment. That's all. Don't stop at all. Amen. God saints His word in your heart. Just take that sword and start chopping it. Amen. Hallelujah. I ain't got time to wait for nothing else. Just crossed over. I haven't got time to even settle down. He said, when you take my staff and lay it on the baby and if anybody speaks to you, don't even speak to him. If the devil says, hey, you know what you're feeling? Don't even speak to him. Just keep going. The devil, you know, the devil say, but you know what? You know, so and so, when they got the Holy Ghost, remember, they they almost lost their mind. Don't even speak to him. Just keep on going. You don't know about so and so. It's you and God. Amen. That's right. Amen. Keep God. He anoints his servants. I got to hurry. God anoints his servants. See, now, I got to bypass a few notes here, but I'd like to say this. Here, listen, I post, little lady, listen close now. Here, we see the tactics of the devil. How do we do? Now, I've got a lot of scriptures here, prophets and things, where he come to them and different people through the Bible and done the same thing. It's always his tactic is to try to get the people to disbelieve God's Word. Listen, you soldiers of the cross, when you disbelieve one word of God's written Bible, you're disarmed. Believe that, honey? You're disarmed. You surrender, you jellyfish. Put on the full armor of God. Amen. We're in a battle. What God said is true. Every man's word's a lie. See? But as soon as you get you to listen to one thing, that's his tactic, you're disarmed. How many things did Eve have to listen to? One. She was disarmed right then. 
What the devil do? Swept right into her mind, into her spirit, and there she was perverted. Is that right? She was perverted the very minute that she was disarmed when she disbelieved God's Word. All right. Here we see his tactics. God's soldiers are commanded to put on the full armor of God. Is that right? Now, if you want to write that scripture down, it's found in Ephesians 6, 10, and 13. See, we read it a while ago. It's our text. All right. Notice. Put on the full armor of God. Let's, have you got a few minutes time? Amen. Let's go back here just a minute. Let's just see what the full armor of God is. All right. Let's begin at the 10th verse. Now listen close now. Let's find the full armor of God. Finally, my brethren. I know I'm going, I'm, it's 20 minutes right now, 12, just about. I, I, don't, I don't want to teach you too, too long today, but I, I, I may not have it. It's about one more message till I take some of my trips for the summer. You see, you know what? You know why I'm doing this? Amen. I'll tell you. The other day, I had a dream. Amen. I wasn't going to tell it, but just on my mind, I might as well do it. After the Lord has given me interpretations, I dreamed that I was fixing to cross a great river for mission work. And I, first, I was up there with my wife. And how many ever know George Smith, Six Second Smith? Here in town, George Smith, this boy's on the police force here. He, poor George is an alcoholic now. But he was one of the best fighters. He was the one who gave me my training before he went to YMCA and anywhere. He used to train us. And he was fast, real fast. and only a welder, weighed 145 pounds. And he trained me. He used to stand up there and he could take his fist like that and hit me right in the stomach, raise me up against the wall. See, but, and it wouldn't bother me. He just had me trained. It wasn't enough of just training. And then I, I dreamed the other night that I seen Six Second Smith now, it wasn't a vision, it was a dream. And I seen Six Second Smith, uh, young fellows coming against him and wrestling. And he, that old man, about, oh, I guess I'm 52, he's about 58, 60. There wasn't any of them young guys could touch him in any way. He just tied him in a knot. Like I just lay him on the floor and hold him with his hands. And I thought, that's strange. And I thought my wife was with me. And I said, that's strange. I said, you know what, matey? He used to be my trainer. She said, I, I remember that. You tell me about it. I said, yes, sir. With his good training, I won 15 professional fights and quit the, the business to preach the gospel. Just then it changed. And I was starting to cross a, a water. But when I was going, I was going by a power boat. And I looked over and there sat two of my brethren sitting there in a canoe, getting ready to go with me. I said, you can't do that, brother. Mm-mm. I must go alone. And the boatman come up. And he said, uh, here's your boat. A real white plastic canoe. I said, no, uh, not that. He said, well, you can run up this way with it 50 miles an hour. I said, but i got to cross that way. Well, he said, get with them guys. I said, they're not boatmen. They don't know enough about that. They're enthused. They can't shoot that. They'll both drown out there. They just can't do it. And he said, well, are you, can you trust? I said, listen, I, I know more about boats than they do, and I wouldn't try to shoot it with that, just that kind of material. I said, it's got to take a power boat to cross that. I said, it'll take something greater than that. And uh, I see him look around to one of the brethren and said, are you a boatman? The brethren said, yes. I said, that's wrong. And the boatman come back. He said, tell you what you do. He said, they love you. They believe you. But said, if you try to cross in the power boat, they'll try to follow you in that canoe. They'll both die. See? Said they can't follow you. And I said, well, what must I do? And this boatman at the dock, he said, you go back up there. Said there's only one little storehouse in all this country. One little storehouse. And just lay in plenty of supply. Said, and they'll stay here. They'll they'll stay here while you are while you're gone. But said, you'll have to lay in supplies. And I was just ordering all kinds of cabbages and turnips and radishes and things, pile them in there like that, and I woke up. I didn't know what it was, but I do now. See? We're laying in the supplies, brother. Uh, this is a life that you have to walk alone. Amen. Leo, you remember the dream you had that time when you first come here? About the pyramid? And you thought you'd come up in there? And I said, Leo, no man gets up here. God has put a man up here. You climbed every physical round that could be climbed. I said, you can't come here, Leo. See? Go back down and just tell the people it, it comes from God. See? See? 
It's something that you you can't depend upon as good as brethren and sisters in my church and everything, and good as other churches are and brethren everywhere. Now, I cannot keep away from the church out there. Somebody says, well, why do you go out with them people, them Trinitarians, all this, that, and the other, and the oneness in Jesus' name and all these other things? Why do you mix up with them for it all? They are mine. No matter what they've done, they're mine. They're in my pulpit. When the Israel had done so evil... Until God even told Moses to separate yourself. I'll start a new new tribe with you. Moses told his seven away. He said, before you take them, take me. No matter what they've done. That's who I'm sent to. He sends a light. Not to shine where there's light. Where there's darkness. That's where light belongs. And you've got to get with the people. You've got to stand with them regardless. you got to end their wrong. Israel was wrong as wrong could be. They were so wrong to God give them up. But Moses, I've always wondered how that ever come. But the Spirit of Christ in Moses, see? Yeah. see, we're all wrong. He stood for all of us when we was in a room. No matter how wrong they are, let's not disfellowship or disassociate ourselves with anything. As long as we can win a soul, let's go in with wise as serpent, as harmless as doves, see, and try to win every soul that we can. Now, this is what I'm saying this morning is storing food. Storing food. So that you'll have something to eat. So that you'll have something to feast upon. Get it on your tape, set in the cool of the room. Maybe when I'm a long ways away, you'll still remember these things are true. Set in your room and listen. See? And this is food, storing it in the storehouse. I don't know where the trip is, but wherever it is, he knows where he's leading. I don't. I just follow. Now, what do you say here now? Listen closely. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Be strong in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, shooting bullets and cutting with knives. See? That's not it. But against principalities. Against powers against the rulers of darkness of this world. The rulers of darkness. Who rules the world? The devil. Oh, Certainly. Who's all these things going on, all these ungodly things going on around through here in these governments and so forth? It's all the devil. The Bible said so. The devil controls in the United States. The devil controls Germany. The devil controls every nation in the world. I'm coming to it just in a few minutes. And we'll find out whether he does or not. Where there ever kingdom ever was and ever will be until God sets up His kingdom is controlled by the devil. I don't mean everybody in it is the devil now. There's godly man in, in government offices. There's going to be one here in a few nights. Right here to show a picture here with Brother Argan right here at the place. He's been the diplomat to about five different presidents. Brother uh, Roe. And he's, um, he'll be here, to, uh, I think it's about the second week in April. Uh, Brother Neville announced it. And um, he's a wonderful man. He said he could speak in eight different languages, I believe, but when he received the Holy Ghost, he didn't have no language he could talk to the Lord, so the Lord just gave him one. He said, so he talked to him. <laughs> give him a new one that he never had practice on. <laughs> all right. Spiritual weakness in high places. Wherefore, now listen, all ye soldiers, now just before we start the prayer line, take unto, your, unto you the W-H-O-L-E. Whole, not just part of it, the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. That's the day we're living in. And having done all to stand, stand. Amen. You get that? See, honey? When you've done all you can do to stand, then stand. Don't move. Stand, therefore, Having your loins, listen to, listen to what this is, your loins, that's your middle part here, see? Girded about with truth. What is the truth? The Word of God. Amen. That's right. Thy Word is truth. All right? And having on the breastplate of righteousness, that is, do what's right. Got the Word of God in you. Doing what's right. The breastplate of righteousness. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Go anywhere, any place, any time. Feet shod with the gospel. See? Hallelujah. And look, above all, above all of it, 
Take the shield of faith. That's the one that knocks off the darts. See? The shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Hey. And take the helmet of salvation. That's the soul mind, uh, the mind in your the head covers over the head. And the and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. How do you go to let this helmet? What's it does? It's a protection. What is the helmet made out of? Brass. Amen. Brass can't even be tempered. Hard. Harder than iron. A brass head piece. The what? The salvation. Knowledge of knowing this. And my healing comes from God. My salvation comes from God. My experience matches His Word. Not the church's idea of the Word. Hey man, there you are. Covered over with the protection. The helmet of salvation, deliverance. Pick that. And then go marching forward. Oh, now, now that's what we're supposed to do. Satan's army. Now watch, now we, I just got to hurry, but I, I, I got to get this in. Amen. Satan's army brings diseases. That's what Satan is. He's a destroyer. Satan, the whole kingdom of Satan is sickness, death, and sorrow, and frustrations, and worry, all on Satan. God is life, faith, joy, peace over here. See? Now that's the two great forces that's coming together right now. They're battling. They're battling right here in the building right now. They battle day by day with you. Every force, Satan following you along, that great big kingly priestly Goliath, trying to scare the liver out of you. He's right. But God, you're fortified. Yes. Amen with the gospel, with the word of truth around your life. Glory, preacher, that's what it is. Hallelujah. Helmet of salvation, the shield of faith, and the sword waving in your hand. Yes, Satan, I'm coming to meet you. You meet me in the name of science. You meet me in the name of, of uh, culture. You meet me in the name of organization. You meet me in the name of this, that, that, but I meet you in the name of the Lord God of Israel. I'm coming after you. Give away. <laughs> Even death itself can't stand there. Chop a hole right through it. Right. Satan's army brings diseases and God's army is commissioned to cast them out. Amen. Amen. There you are. Every time Satan throws any on to you, God's army to cast them out. Oh, praise Amen. Amen. Cast out. That's the very technique that God used. Satan used the army of destruction to disbelieve God's word and set him up a better kingdom than Michael had, and God cast him out. Amen. God's method is cast out the evil. Cast down reasoning. Amen. Cast down superstitions. Cast down weary. Cast down diseases. Cast down sin. Amen. You're above it. Resurrected in Christ Jesus, sitting in heavenly places with every devil under your foot. He starts to stick his head in there. What? You know, you are dead. Your life is hid. What is dead? You're dead to your senses. You're dead to your conscience. Your own human will would say, yes, I guess I'm dead to your reasonings. Dead to all those things and you are buried in the name of Jesus Christ and raised with Him. And wherever He is, there you are also. What happened when one of them doubters got in heaven? God kicked him out. And what did He say to the soldiers that's raised in Christ? When a devil comes along, kick him out. Cast him out. When Jesus trained His army and commissioned them to the ends of the world, go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow the believers, my soldiers. Amen. My name, they shall cast out devils, Amen. speak with new tongues, take up serpents or drink dead things that wouldn't harm them. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war with the cross of Jesus going on before. I'm crucified with Him. Nevertheless, I live, not me that live, but he that liveth in me. A word going on before. God cutting away with his sharp two-edged sword. No wonder 
When Grant took Richmond, and that little southern woman seen Grant coming in, the inspiration struck her, and she said, Mine eyes have seen the glory of oh, the coming of the Lord. He's tramping out the village where the grapes with wrath are stored. He's loose of faithful lightning with his terrible swift sword. His troops are marching on. Oh. Hey, man. How did Grant take Richmond just as he come to it? Hey, man. That's how he took Richmond. That's how God's soldiers take sin, sickness. Amen. Just as they come to it. Amen. That's the way they overcome their doubts and fears and things. When one rises, they chop him down. Move out of the way. Oh, my. That's it. God cast them out like He did in heaven. Our great chief captain showed us how it was done. Roy Roberson, Brother Funk, many old veterans here. <laughs> you know what a real captain is. One time I was this little Jeffersonville Fire Department down here, Fowl's place caught on fire. And here was Jeffersonville Fire Department standing down there and the captain walking and I said, Spurt a little water up here. Like a little hose out here. Here come the Clark still up. Spurt a little water over here. Fowl's building burnt down. They call Louisville. Here come trained man. Oh, how them sirens ringing across there. And here's a chief captain's along here. These part of parts say, "Spur a little water up here. Spur a little water down here." <laughs> Untrained man, brother. As soon as that engine stopped, who was at the head of the ladder? The captain. When that ladder went up, he went with it. When he struck the window, he hadn't got to the window yet. He grabbed his axe and threw it through the window and said, "Come on, boys." The fire was out in a few minutes. A captain. There's not a captain say, spurt a little water here. Try a little bit here, but come on, boys! Yes. Amen! He Amen. led the way. He showed us how it's done. Amen. I thought that well-trained fire department, they had that fire out in a few minutes. Oh. Why, they had a captain there that knew what he was doing. <laughs> Brother, talk about all your theology you want to, your man-made denominations, your organizations. Amen. Play with it! Amen. I got a chief captain who told me how to do it. Say, well, if I can smell it, feel it, oh, nonsense. Here's the way the chief captain said it's done. In Luke, the fourth chapter, I ain't got time to read it, read it yourself. Luke, the fourth chapter, begins first verse. He never said, now, I'll tell you, you go over here and you make a great organization, you get presbyters and deacons and uh, you get uh, uh, cardinals and bishops and you get this. He never said that. When Satan met him, he said, now you're hungry, turn these stones into bread. He said, it's written. <laughs> he said, up here, we'll take care of here and show you something. But it's written. I'll do this if you do It's written. That's how the chief captain said it was done. How's it done, sister? It's written. If they lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. It's written. In my name, they shall cast out devils. <laughs> what is it? It's written. That's the captain's orders. It is written. Who swear? Hear my words and believe it on him that sent me has eternal life. It's written. It's written. It's written. That's the, that's the orders. That's the soldier. That's the way. That's the artillery we move up. What did he do? He walked right up there to go out. He showed us. How did David show the army how it was done? How did David show Israel how it was done? David means beloved, Savior. See? How did David do it? He said, here's what it's done. Trust in the Word of the Lord. And Goliath come out there and said, you know what? I'll pick you up on into this spirit and I'll feed you to the birds. He said, you meet me as an organization. You meet me as a modern scientist. You meet me with your great big 14-foot sword. You meet me with a helmet of brass and with a piece of shield that I couldn't even lift off the ground. You meet me as a trained warrior. You meet me with Ph.D. and L.L.D. and double L.D. You meet me in all these things. But I come in the name of the Lord God of Israel and today I'll cut your head from your shoulders. Amen. Amen. That little bitty wart coming out there against that giant. But he knew where he was standing. Israel just shaking back. Oh, poor little fella. But I said, I'll show you what I'll do. And here he comes. He had F-A-I-T-H. See? I-N-J-E-S-U-S. Five rocks. Five stones. One little stone in there to start it off with. Whirling around like that. The Holy Ghost got a hold of the rock and away it went. Goliath went to the ground. 
That's the way it's done. That's the way Jesus said when He said, Now if you, brother, is going out on the field, if you want to know how to conquer these devils, I'll show you how it's done. Satan said, I'll meet you, Goliath. I'll show you what I can do. You're hungry if you are the Son of God. I'll challenge you. You say you're the Son of God. I'll challenge you. If you're the Son of God, turn these stones into bread. Eat. You're hungry. And if you are the Son of God, you have power to do it. He said, but it's written. Uh, Man shall not live by bread alone. (laughs) That's where the chief captain did it. Tuck him up on top of the pinnacle of the temple and he said, if you cast yourself down, he said, you know, it's also written. He said, yes, and it's written again. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. See what he called himself? The Lord thy God. <laughs> Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. That's written again like that. See? Oh my. What did he do? He defeated him with the Word of God. The tactic of the devil is to get you to disbelieve God's Word. And the chief captain says, take God's Word and do it. In my name they shall cast out devils. Oh, Satan, their chief captain. Oh, you know, some of these denominations try to get you to believe he's got a fork and hoof. You want a split tail and all that stuff. Don't you believe it? Mm. He ain't that way. No, sir, brother. He's a slicker. (laughs) Don't you believe he's got that? They just do that to scare you away. That's not the devil. The devil don't have a hoof to begin with. I doubt it very much. He just is a spirit. The devil is a spirit. He don't have fork and hoofs and things like you try to picture him. No, no. But he's wise. Brother, he's a real wise man. Educated to the spot. Always has been. In worldly wisdom. Oh, yeah. He's beautiful. Organized his army with worldly wisdom till, brother, don't you try to, try to speak your words. <laughs> you better know what you're talking about when you meet one of these guys. Saying the days of miracles is past. Now, he ain't got, he got a split hoof. He's, oh, he's, he's, a, he's right out of the seminary. He's polished, brother. I mean, he's smart. PhD, LLD, QUST, and all the rest of it. See? All in there, he's as smart as he can be. Wise? Sure he is, a serpent. Sneakiness of all of them. Hair slicked down, brother. And I mean, dressed and not a wrinkle in the coat. Smart. This is wise and shrewd as he can be. That's right. Don't you fool with him unless you know what you're talking about. That's right. Oh, but we know his old, his old tactics. We know what he's trying to do. Get us to disbelieve God's Word. And he hasn't got fork and hoofs. No, no. No. Now, we find out that if he hasn't got fork and hoofs, then he must be something else. He's a slicker. He's wisdom, educated, organized. Brother, he's got his army. So look one time over in Switzerland. I just can't find a place to stop, folks. There's a, over in Switzerland, there come this German army. The aliens coming in. Why, it looked like a brick wall. Yeah. Every man trained. Every spear sitting out like this, eight or ten feet in front. And they come up to the poor little Swiss up there. What they have, they were armed with the with the blades out of their sickles, sticks and rocks. And there they stood that backed them up. Right across the hill was their homes. Here the Swiss army went out to meet them. They hadn't done nothing to them. They just come in to take their land. What in the world's this child done? Just a kid. Satan! So it is, would take her life if he could. Certainly. There he is, prematurely. See, the Swiss hadn't done anything. They were good people. They were trying to defend their homes. But they stood out there to defend. After a while, there was one by the name of Arnold von Wickler. Here come this army that's all surrounded. Said, what can we do? Everywhere, just oceans of man, well trained. That's the way Satan does it. Well trained, his peer pointing right out. Each man is step one, two, one, two. Just pulling in this little army. Just, just keep walking. That's all they had to do. And just pick up everyone on the sword. The spears go right on through them. That the end of the Swiss army. That had been all. Right over the hill was their homes and loved ones. The women had been ravished and raped, and their young daughters and children killed, and homes burnt, and everything. Food taken, cattle and stuff, and gone. There they was. What happened? Inspiration struck one by the name of Arnold von Winkler. He said, man of Switzerland, this day I die for Switzerland. Amen. Yeah, man. This day I die for Switzerland. They said, what did you do? He said, you just follow me and fight with all you got. He stood up there, throwed down his spear, a little stick he had in his hand like that. He screamed out with his hands up like that and run towards that holler and make a way for liberty. 
Run as hard as he could go right to the army. And when he did, he grabbed every one of the spears that he could and throw them right into his breast like that and died. He told them before he left, said his little home over yonder, a wife and some babies, that I'm leaving, a little home that I just bought. And said, I, I love them, but the day I die for Switzerland, he give my, he said, I give my life to save the nation. And that was a hero. They, they haven't had a war since. That, that ended it. It routed that army with that heroism so displayed till it wasn't, uh, the, the, the army was so confused, the uh, Swiss roll rocks on them and run them out of the country and never been back since. That's been hundreds of years ago. See? Why? Ah, that was a great deed, but oh, brother, one day, when the uh, ignorance, superstitions, doubt, frustrations, and fears had God's people backed into the corner, there was one named Jesus Christ. Yeah. This day I die for the people. That's right. What did he say to his army? Follow me and fight with everything you got. You got a club? Fight with a club. Don't be afraid. You got a stick? Fight with a stick. You got a rock? Fight with a rock. Whatever you got. That's what our chief captain says today. I took the word of God and I defeated the devil in his power. He chopped into ribbons. Hey, man, with that word. Now, whatever you've got, you just got one word. The Lord thy God that healeth thee. Chopping. Follow! Hey Amen. Follow our captain. Yes, sir. He chopped him up. Satan with his big, beautiful kingdoms and more beauty and everything, all up to date. Don't have nothing to do with us. That's right. He's still the most substantial of all the beasts of the field. Yes, sir. Amen. Jesus said that the children of this world were wiser than the children of the kingdom of God. <laughs> now, these two great conflicts... We're going to, I've got to have to close. These two great conflicts are coming together right now. Right now is the hour when sickness and things have struck the world to medical science has stumped and everything stumped is nothing. It, it, we're just in the army, the little army of God's being backed into the corner and everything. Brother, it's time for another Arnold Von Winkler. It's time! Amen. It's time for another man of God to stand for. It's time for an Elijah to appear. It's time for something to take place! Amen. God's army! Close up your mind. Don't stop for a minute to think of anything the devil's got to offer you through your senses. But remember, God's word can never fail. These two great armies. When the enemy comes in like a flood as is coming today, what did God say to do? The Spirit of God would raise up a standard against it. Are you one of them? Yes, sir. We are taught in James 4, 7. I don't have time to read it. James 4, 7. To resist the devil. Amen. And he just won't walk away. But he'll flee. <laughs> resist the devil. How do you resist the devil? The same way our chief captain told us to do it. Amen. Take the word of God. That's how you resist the devil is by the word of God. The chief captain told us just how it was done. All right. Now in closing, I want to say this. That old devil. Now you think he's brazen. You think he'll attack a child? He'll attack anything. He attacked the Jesus Christ. He come at him with three wild attacks. Did you know that? Satan didn't only attack once. He attacks you with a disease. Then you're going to come back and attack you and tell you days of miracles has passed. You didn't get healed. There's nothing to it. You know that's right? Yeah. He attacked at Jesus three times. Three wild attacks. He ran on Jesus with his unbelief in God's Word. Jesus was the Word. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, he didn't believe it. If thou be. <laughs> if thou be. Here he come. Wild attacks like sometimes the enemy makes. Here he come. Say, if thou be the Son of God, show me a miracle. Let me see it done. Brother, three wild attacks he flew in, if thou, if thou be. Now, what did Jesus? Jesus was the Word of God. Yeah. He was the Word and he attacked in the Word. Yeah. Glory. I, I, I'm just getting, just feeling good to preach now. Honest, I am. Huh? Jesus is the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word dwelt, made flesh and dwelt. Jesus was the Word. What did He do? He cut into ribbons. Amen. Oh my! I'm going to quit. What did Jesus do? He was the Word. Amen. So with the Word, He cut Satan on his wild attack. He flew in there like a bunch of fair stormtroopers or something like that. Flew in on Jesus the word like that, and Jesus took that word and sliced him to pieces. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are slicing to pieces, defeated him with the word. See his attack? Watch. Listen close, this closing. His attack is what? 
disbelieve God's word. That's his attack. Now, can you see the greatest battles ever fought? There's only two forces. Satan and God. And what's Satan's weapon? Against you is to try to get you to disbelieve your weapon. He disarms you. Let's, let's listen real quiet now. Listen. If he can get you to disbelieve your weapon is equivalent. If he gets you to believe that your weapon is not strong enough. He's disarmed you. Oh, Brother Neville, I hope we never believe that. Look, he's disarmed you when he gets you to disbelieve that weapon. Amen. When you lay that down, that finishes your fight. You're done. Hold that weapon. Don't you lay it down. We seize unbelief. But one more thing I want to say now in a minute. Russia, I want to say this for benefit of the veterans and so forth here and you Bible students. What you fussing and hollering about Russia? <laughs> you don't hear me telling you to build a bomb shelter, do you? What you fussing about Russia? Russia ain't nothing. They ain't going to win no wars. They ain't going to conquer no world. Communism isn't going to conquer no world. Oh, amen. What's the matter with people? Can God's word fail? Listen. This is on tape now. To the world I speak of wherever these tapes may go. And to you people here, no matter whatever happens to me, you believe this. Russia, communism, isn't conquering nothing. God's word can't fail. Romanism is going to conquer the world. Let's take Daniel's vision. That's the word of God. Thou, Daniel, uh, thou, King Nebuchadnezzar, is this head of gold, Babylon. Another kingdom will succeed thee, which is silver. See? Which of Medes of Persia. Another was Greece, Alexander the Great. Next come in Rome, and there was nothing said about a communism. Rome conquered the world. Jesus Christ was born in the Roman kingdom and persecuted his first time come here by the Roman kingdom. And on his second advent, coming now, his message is persecuted by the Roman denominations, which is the mother of all of them. And when he returns, he'll come back to wipe out that Roman kingdom that the Jews has always looked for him to come and wipe out the Roman kingdom. The Catholic hierarchy with all the denominations in the world right now coming together as an organization. The Confederation of Churches organizing themselves together. It isn't Russia, it's Rome. Thus saith the Lord. Show me a scripture where communism or anything else besides Rome will rule. Thank you, Jesus. Did the Medo Persia succeed? Nebuchadnezzar? Sure. Did Greece succeed them? Yeah. Did Rome take them over from there? Did it break up into ten Ottoman powers just like we got now? Did Eisenhower, which means iron, Khrushchev means clay, did the Heather meeting right here and Khrushchev took off his shoe to make it a plain open thing to beat on a desk like that to show the people? Well, what's the matter with the people today? Where is faith got to? Why, don't you believe the Word of God is the truth? And that's the end of you. What's the matter with the preachers today? Communism. Every preacher's out here trying to fight communism. Communism, nothing. The thing the devil's weeding it right under your nose and don't know it. Amen. It's Romanism. Denominationalism. And Rome is the mother of denominations. The Bible says she was a whore and her daughters were harlots. Amen. Against God, against His Word. Soldiers take up the Word. Amen. With that word, yes. I'll perish one day. But this word can't perish. Yes. You younger people, if it don't happen in my generation, you'll see. There's the thing. Yes. Right. Did you hear the news this morning? Miss Kennedy going to see the Pope and what the Pope said? Yes. 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 All the religions of the world. <laughs> uh, help us well, maybe we get a little more of that next Sunday. See, don't worry about Russia. Russia's a small pebble on the beach. <laughs> don't you worry about communism. You watch Romanism when it's uniting with the churches. There's nothing written in the Scripture about communism ruling the world. And I go by the Word. Regardless of what anything else goes, it's a Word, I believe. 
It's Romanism that takes the world. And Romanism is the mother of organization. And there was an organization to Rome and every one of them come out of it. And the Bible said so. She was the mother of harlots. I could stay half a day on it again, but I guess I might as well move on. When the enemy attacks us then, oh, I tell you, you ought to come join our... What are you going to do? Back down? Compromise? Not a real soldier won't. Amen. No, sir. What do we do then? The mind... That the mind that was in Christ, is that what the Bible says? The mind that was in Christ be with you. What kind of a mind did he have? Stay with the Word. That's right. Stay with the Word, the Father's Word, and defeated the enemy every time. Now when the enemy attacks and tries to say, you got to do this and do that, what are you going to do? Stay with the Word. That's right. What do you want to do then? Take the Word. What is the Word? The Bible said here, we just read it. For the Spirit... Of God is the Word. See? Look here. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword, the sword of the Spirit, the sword of the Spirit, what the Spirit that comes in through your mind and enters into you, and the sword of that Spirit is the Word of God. Amen. What does that Spirit fight with? What does the Holy Spirit fight with? Sensation? Feeling? The Word! Word. The Word. Hallelujah. Hey, Word. Hey, what is the Word. Word. Hey. Word. Hey. Word. Let's say it. Word. Word. Word of God is what the Spirit fights with. The Spirit of God Praise walks right up to the devil and said, It is written. Thank you. Amen. It is written. Hallelujah. The devil gives away. What do we do? Take the sword which is the Word of God. Put it with what? A hand of faith. Mm, A strong hand of faith. The two-edged sword. The Bible said in Hebrews 4, it's it's a two-edged sword. Cuts both coming and going. Brother, what does it do? Take the Word, take the Spirit, let the Spirit come into your heart, open up your mind, say, Thy Word is truth. You do this, sister. Thy Word is truth. Lord, I ain't going to pay attention to how I feel, what anybody else says. I'm stopping up. I'm blowing out every one of my avenues. All the frustrations and doubts and unbeliefs that I've ever had, every feeling I ever had, all the sickness I ever had, everything else I ever had, I'm blowing them all out. I'm bypassing all that. I'm coming right straight to my spirit. Oh, Lord, come down. You said you made me a free moral agent. You are, my son. All right. I open up my heart and my mind. Come in, Lord Jesus, and grab the faith, that sword of the Spirit. Thus saith the Lord. Scream hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Then cut down every enemy in front of you. There it is. Cut every enemy. If a, a old spooky spirit made you feel all cut that thing away with the word of all. Oh, amen. But our strength is the joy of the Lord is my strength. Get away from me, you cut him with the word. Hey, man. Whether it be demon, whether it be enemy, whether it be sickness, whether it be disease, whatever it is, take that word and pull it with the sword. And if you whack it the first time, it don't seem to move. Amen. Whack it again and whack it again and whack it again and whack it until you chip your hole through like a little chicken peeping itself out of an eagle, what you are. Hallelujah. Keep yourself out on through that old shallow sickness. Cut your way out and say, Hallelujah. Where's the next one? Amen. 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 That's the that's the soldier. Amen. That's the soldier of the cross. Amen. Yes, sir. Knock every enemy out. Hallelujah. Why? Why? We are predestinated royal seed of Abraham. Oh, Lord. When Abraham denied everything that was against God's word, he chopped his way right through every obstacle that came in front of him. Yes, amen. They said, your wife's too old. He just chopped the thing hey, out of the way. Man. The devil said, you can't do this. You can't do that. Abraham chopped it out of the way. He whacked that in and whacked that in and cut himself through. For next, Lord. Move your tent up here. He went up, built him an altar up there. Got up there and Satan comes and said, now, I tell you, this is not the right place. I'll stay right there. Get off of my ground. Hey, 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 hey. Lot said, you better come on down here. We're having a good time down here. We all got an organization down here. While my wife's the head of the literary society and everything else in the city. I'll tell you where to come down here. Sarah said, Abraham, shut up, Sarah. 
Hallelujah. Say it out here. This is where God placed me, right, church, where I stand. Here's where God placed me. All hail the power of the Lord. Sinking Even death itself, everything else is sinking sand. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. The royal seed of Abraham. The royal seed. Yes, Why, England's most selected army is the royalty of England. Royal blood, everything. And the royal seed of Christ is the Holy Ghost filled church. Filled with the Holy Ghost. What? Royal seed by the promise, not by sensations. But by the promise of God, they stand by the word of God and chop their way through, screaming, Hallelujah! Even death comes and says, It's coming up your sleeve. Say, Give away, George, I'm crossing over. Cut your way right on through to the promised land. Amen. What happens? When the battle is all over, I'm closing now, sure enough. When the battle is all over and the saints come marching home, I want to ask you something. What happened? What happened when Hitler went into France? Why, well, they said you couldn't even see the skies for a while, the planes. The Germans goose step. They're standing, passing by, celebrating a victory. When Stalin came to Russia, for miles behind each tank, just a little behind the other, just bombarded Berlin until there was nothing left of it. That's all. And when they went, these, German, these Russian soldiers celebrating, they went in with that, you know, that little funny thing to do. I see it on a picture one time in London. How they come in, an actual picture of the thing where it happened. Coming in celebrating. Oh my. When we heard that the war was over, we screamed, we blowed whistles. When the heroes come back, we met him up there. They screamed, they hollered. I had a cousin who was in there said, when he come back, all the old the veterans had been scarred up so bad, they couldn't get out of the bed, so they just rolled them up on top of the ship when they come in to see the Statue of Liberty standing up. So them great big men stand there and they just cry and fall right over like that. When they see that Statue of Liberty, they've been away from home for four years, fighting, battle of shock and everything else. But they know that wife and sweetheart and mother and dad and children and all that they love is right behind that Statue of Liberty. It represented what they've been fighting for. Oh, the whistles blowed in New York, went into a scream, that's all. When their heroes come marching in, that'll be a minor thing. Yeah. One time when Caesar, after a great battle... He said, I want my most famous warrior to ride by me in this great celebration of triumph over our enemy. And every one of the officers trim their plumes and shine their shields and march by, you know, like that. As, as real soldiers like that. After a while, a little old fellow come by. Cut my... He just kind of looked up and started on like that. Caesar said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You! How do you even dress like a, an officer? He said, come here. He said, where'd you get them scars at? He said, out on the battlefield, he said, climb up here. You're the guy who wants to sit by me. <laughs> Why? He showed that he had been in battle. Oh, God have mercy on a man that can cut his hand on a sardine can and get a citation. I want to be battle scarred. And Paul said, I bear in my body the marks of Jesus Christ. That's why I want to battle on the field. Someday when our great chief captain shall come, who armored us, who give us the armor of God, the Holy Ghost, give us His Word to fight with. Stand out there. When our great chief captain comes riding in, I want to step up on the chariot and ride up home with him, don't you? Yeah. Then when I take my little old wife by the arm, look around here and see my brethren and their wives and their children, when we start walking down through those paradises of God and the angels filling the air with anthems above like that, talk about a celebration. And when the battle's over, we shall wear the crown. Oh, my. Oh, soldiers of the cross this morning. Pull that arm of faith out here and get a hold of this weapon. What about it, sister? Are you ready? Pull that weapon out. Say, God, I don't care what, what the devil has said to me. How much anybody else has said this morning, I'm believing. I'm believing. As I said the other day, a little, I believe a few Sundays ago, as a man had a dream. He dreamed that the devil was a little bitty old thing around to him and said, Boo! And he jumped back and the devil got bigger. Boo! And he jumped back and the devil got bigger. Finally, the devil got as big as he was. Go to overcome him. He knew he had to fight him with something. 
So he looked around, he couldn't find nothing to fight him with. He just picked up the Bible and the devil said, boo. He said, boo, right back at him. And the devil got littler and littler and littler and finally beat him to death with the word. Amen. Amen. Your soldier answer says, take that word and say, it's written. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to die, I'm going to live. I'll sit out of this tabernacle and praise God for His goodness with the rest of us. you believe that, saints? Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Oh, Lord God, creator of heavens and earth. Oh, Jesus. Let it be known today that thou art still God. No matter how much I would preach, how many things I'd say, Lord, a word from you settles it. These handkerchiefs are laying here representing sick people. I pray, Heavenly Father, that your blessings and power will rest upon each of them as I lay my hands upon them. God, in Jesus Christ's name, I pray that you'll anoint these handkerchiefs with your holy presence. For it's written in the Word. It's nothing against the Word, but it's said in the Word that they're taken from the body of Paul. Handkerchiefs and aprons. Unclean spirits went out of the people and they were healed of different diseases. Now, we're not St. Paul, but you're still God. And you're still the same Holy Spirit. I lay my hands upon these handkerchiefs in the name of the Lord Jesus and ask that you bless and heal each one of them. And God laying over here in a bed has been laying here nothing but a child. Just a beautiful little girl. She can't live, Lord. Satan has done an evil to her. And the beloved physicians of this earth has tried hard, no doubt, to save the child. They just can't do it. They're at the end of their wit. They don't know nothing else to do. But Lord, I'm so glad that there's another chapter written. We can turn another page. And in this page, we see the great physician come in. We're calling him for counsel this morning. Now, Lord, is not it written here in your word that these signs shall follow them that believe? Lord, if I'm not a believer, make me one now. If this little girl is not a believer, make her one now. These signs shall follow them and believe. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. It's also written, In my name they shall cast out devils. Lord, them's your words. It's yours. It's your word. And now as your servant, as you said, if there will be two or three of you meet together, I'll be in your midst. And if you'll agree as touching one thing and ask, you shall receive it. God, this child is probably the most sickest person in the building this morning because she can't live without you very much longer. And she's the most sickest. So we're all agreeing as ever soldier standing here. And in this group stands the royal seat of Abraham. Amen. We're marching in on Satan now. The might as well get ready to go, Satan. Because the armors are gleaming, the colors are streaming. Men and women holding swords marching forward now upon you. For this little girl, come out of her, Satan. Leave that child. As the army of the living God, we defy you. Leave her in the name of Jesus Christ. I go to lay hands upon her. I'm saying you've done this child. You've done this evil. I know that you're more than a match for a human being, but you're not a match for my Lord. So I come in His name. Leave her, thou spirit of the devil. Thou demon of sickness. Come out of this child, and may she go free from this day on. Yes, I'll pronounce this in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, Lord God, you raise the dead. And prove that you were God. Hallelujah. Raise this young woman to her health and strength again, and she'll stand in this building here. The devil is gone from her. Amen. She's going to make her way. May she live to the glory and honor of God. Hallelujah. It is Hallelujah. Amen. It, it has been spoken. Amen. Now let it be done. Hallelujah. Is there others in here that want to raise your hands and say, I want to be prayed for? I'm sick. I need God. Hallelujah. I don't know how much time we got. In the name of the Lord, Jesus.
We got enough time to let them people pass by here. I just feel real comfortable this morning. I want you to come down here, Billy. And just take maybe this one section right here on this side over here alone. Just let this section come first, then we take the back section after that, just up to that aisle there. And then we just take them like that, and then they won't. And now I want Brother Neville and some of the minister brothers to stand over here by me, right here. So you can take them right down the aisle again. All right. All right. Now, I, how many of you got your armor on? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus. Be different now. We're going to be all right. Thank you, God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Oh, my. Hallelujah. Oh, you soldiers. Hallelujah. Pull the sword. Pull the sword. Soldiers of the cross. Marching on. All other grounds are sinking. All right.
This man was sent home from the hospital just recently, dying, eating up with ago. cancer a year ago. Two. two years ago. The prostrate. This the doctor just gave him a few days to live. And one morning we went up there real early, offered prayer for him, the same one this I can use, and they can't even find a trace of it. Hallelujah! Amen. 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 Jewish Revival to tell Jewish Revival preached every night. 81 years old. He was <laughs> All right, sisters. Short time now. You believe? <laughs> One more Christian soldier. All right, sister. You, to every one of you, what are we going to do? Thus saith the Lord. What are we going to do? Hang around here, Satan. You lost. We're coming over now. We're marching on over into the promised land. What's that? What is this mountain before Zerbella? Who is this dance before there? You'll become a plane. Why? With a two-eighth sword, we'll chop her to the ground. That's right. All right. Onward, Christian soldier, marching as you walk with the cross of Jesus. What was the first thing? The singers Amen. went forth first. What followed? The ark. Amen. And the battle. Amen. All right, do you believe it now? Amen. We're singing on. We're Christian soldiers. We're pulling it away ever down. Rising to our feet now. We march to battle. Let's stand now. Everybody. On Christian soldiers. Where's ever enemy? Under our feet. Yeah. What are we today? Live with Christ. Now, it's over, sir. You believe that? Go home now. You feel all right? She says she feels all right now. So everything's all right. How many out there feel all right? And when they shout it, the water fell down. And they tuck it. Amen. They tuck the city. Amen. Amen. You believe me? 
Now don't forget tonight, service. Brother Neville will be here tonight and bring us a good message. And Sunday, next Sunday, the Lord willing, be here. Now let's go as we move. And now uh, out from the building, let's go singing onward, Christian soldiers. And from this day henceforth, don't never put that sword in the sheath anymore. Pull it out. Let's conquer. They went forth conquering and to conquer. All right, again on that first verse. On earth, Christian soldiers, what we can.